see that new Dawkins clip where he admitted that no amount of evidence would ever convince him that God exists? What, what would it take for you to believe in God? Well, I used to say uh, it would be very simple. It would be, uh, you know, the second coming of Jesus or, or a great big deep booming bass Paul Robeson voice um, uh, saying, I am God and, and, and I created. But I was persuaded mostly by actually uh, Steve Zara, who's a, who's a regular contributor to my website, richarddawkins.net. Um, he, he more or less persuaded me that if you, if, even if there was this, this booming voice and the second coming in clouds of glory, the more probable explanation is that it's a hallucination or right. a right. conjuring trick by David Copperfield or right. something. Um, so what would, what would persuade you? Well, I'm starting to think nothing would. That man is a national treasure, an international treasure, a planetary treasure, an intergalactic treasure. Another dimension, another dimension, another dimension. Yo, I know you're not making fun of Stephen W. Hawkins' voice, are you? It's the Beastie Boys. They're before your time. Oh. Hey, hey, hey. Did you guys hear about the name of the new rap group that Peter Singer started? No, nah, what's it called? The Bestiality Boys. Imagine deciding what you want to believe and then making yourself completely impervious to any evidence that would refute you. I love it when Dawkins admitted that even if God wrote a message in the stars, you just say aliens did it. Any, any aliens who could actually visit us would have to be so far beyond us in their technology that they probably could manipulate the stars to, to um, spell out words or geometric forms. That's the life. And then going around telling people that you just go wherever the evidence points. Which, which, is, which in, in a way goes against the grain because I've always paid lip service to the view that a scientist should change his mind when evidence is forthcoming. Dawkins is a genius. Mm. I love Dawkins almost as much as I love these poor grits. Poor, poor, Did poor. someone say pork? You shouldn't eat it, it's forbidden. Who are you, the pork police? Yo, isn't that a little redundant? Yeah. <laughs> if God didn't want us to eat a pig, he shouldn't have made it out of pork. There are more important things than food. It is more important to serve Allah. If we know that Islam is true, we know that God said, don't eat pork. Yeah, if, which we don't. You don't know, because he did not follow the teaching of Muhammad. If you follow his teaching, you will find the evidence. You find the proof that Islam is true. Actually, I'm glad that you mentioned proof. Because we're so open to the evidence, right? Now, hold on, guys. We've been coming here for years, and no one has ever had the courage to come up and challenge our views. But this man, as silly as his claims sound, decided to preach to us. And I think that deserves something. You know what? I'm going to do it. I'm going to live according to the teachings of Muhammad for 30 days. Now, who's with me? All right, I'm in. Yeah. All right, no turning back now. Let's do it. Oh no, we got a bomb on our hands. What do I do, man? Cut the blue wire. No, the red wire. No, the blue wire. The red wire. The blue wire. The green wire. There is no green wire. <laughs> Guys, there's one more thing. This is the magic backpack. Wherever you are, whenever you have a question, just ask and it will give you the answer. What's up, guys? We just got done eating some ribs, and this dude just approached us, and what did he say? Well, he uh, challenged us to live according to the teachings of Islam for 30 days, and uh, 
you know, this seems like an interesting thing to do. We uh, don't, you know, we don't expect to uh, be persuaded, but uh, we're going to learn a lot. Most people don't spend 30 days of their lives learning about some religion, but uh, that's where we come in. We're going to tell you, we're going to tell you what we learned during those 30 days. We're going to vlog our entire journey so that you can learn what we learn. So don't go anywhere. Check up on our updates. Check our progress. We'll tell you what we learn. I think it's going to be very interesting. I like learning new things. I think it'll be great. We'll see. All right. We've agreed to follow the teachings of Muhammad for 30 days, but there are a lot of commands in Islam, a lot of Muslim sources. So we need to ask, what's the most important rule we need to follow today? Backpack, what's the most important rule we need to follow? Looks like we have some passages from Sunan Ibn Majah 347. It was narrated that Ibn Abbas said, The Messenger of Allah passed by two new graves, and he said, They are being punished, but they are not being punished for anything major. One of them was heedless about preventing urine from getting on his clothes and the other used to walk about spreading malicious gossip. I don't get it. How is this the most important thing we can do? Maybe we should read the next one. Sunan Ibn Majah 348. It was narrated that Abu Huraira said, the messenger of Allah said, most of the torment of the grave is because of urine. Most of the torment of the grave is because of peeing? That's why the backpack told us we need to learn this. Well, what do we need to learn about pee? Backpack, what's the correct way to pee? There is no mix-up. The prophet can't fix up. <laughs> Sunan on the side, 29. It was narrated that Aisha had said, Whoever tells you that the messenger of Allah urinated standing up, do not believe him, for he would not urinate except while squatting. Squatting. So we need to sit down on the toilet to pee? It doesn't say we need to pee while sitting down. It says we need to pee while squatting. We need to try this. I'll go try in the bucket. I was hiding the grass. I'm good for now. Just party <laughs> town, gotta get down low. Wow. It's party <laughs> town, just to let it go. Yeah. It's party <laughs> town, yeah, go with the flow. Wow. It's party town, you can do it, I know. Time gotta get down low. Yeah. It's party time just to let it go. Yeah. It's party time, yeah. Go with the flow. It's party time, you can do it. I know. Look at this. I've ruined my Nikes. Can you believe this? Day one, I already took an L. Look at this. My Nike is ruined. Messing up your Nikes is a small price to pay to avoid the punishment of the grave. I, I still can't figure out how they, they pee while squatting with their pants around their ankles. I mean, do, do they put like a, a little bucket over their pants so they don't leak all over their pants? Oh. oh, now it makes sense. So that's why they wear those dresses so that way they can pull them up when they squat down to pee. He's right. We need to get some of those cool dresses too. We'll go shopping tomorrow. Hi everyone, well the uh, journey continues. Today we learn the most important rule that we need to follow to be in accord with Muhammad's teachings and that's 
Peeing while squatting, Muhammad said over half the punishment of the grave is due to urinating improperly. So uh, it's going to take us a while to catch on, but we are learning. Yeah, if you don't urinate properly, uh, you're in trouble. You're in trouble. The only bad side is I, I ruined my new pair of Nikes. I'm a little upset about that, but a small price to pay, I guess. You know, well, so. tomorrow we'll get you some sandals and then uh, yeah. you're in luck. Yeah. So, uh, you know, today is a little hard, but nonetheless, check back. We're, you know, doing our journey, telling you how it really is. And uh, I'm so excited. You know, there's a lot to learn, a lot to do, a lot to discover. Oh, so, me too. Check back. Talk to you tomorrow. See you guys. A, B, C, D, E, F, Fajr. It is Fajr prayer time. Personally, I could get used to this schedule, but listen, we got a busy day, guys. Busy, busy day. We're each individually going to go shopping, come back up, meet up, see what we've got. We need to get some of those cool uh, Islamic dresses, all right? So come on, up and at them. Got some brand new threads. Whoo, man. Yeah, bro. Ow! Well, I've been uh, up all night looking at pictures of Muslims. This is pretty much how the community dresses. So if they dress that way, we should dress this way. Besides, you look fly. Uh, noise. Man, you're looking good, bro. Assalamu alaikum, my brothers. <laughs> what are you wearing? What is that, dude? <laughs> this is how black Muslims dress, my brothers. Dude, there were no people running around in the desert in the 7th century with a bow tie and a suit. So, uh, we're gonna have to work on that now. Uh, let me show you how it's done. <laughs> Gross! Ew! I can see your whole body shape. <laughs> what is the, the the skirt doesn't match the blouse? What is he wearing? Oh, oh man. man! What are you gonna say about that, bro? Whoa, 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 whoa! I spent hours learning what Muhammad wore, and I can prove to you that he dressed just like this. So here we see over and over again in the Muslim sources that Muhammad is dressing up in his wives clothing and Muslim translators try to translate this as oh he was in the blanket of his wives but even Aisha Buley a Muslim translator a woman who translated the Quran translates a passage in Bukhari as Muhammad saying the revelation does not come to me when I am in the garments of any woman except Aisha so he was wearing other women's garments but he received revelations while he was in the garment of Aisha. And if it's good enough for Muhammad to dress up in women's clothing, why wouldn't it be good enough for us? We should all be dressing up in women's clothing. You idiot. The reason why he was wearing the garments is because he was getting the revelation. You are not a prophet, fool. Listen you don't need to be wearing women's clothing. To your friends, let me ask you this. Are you the prophet? Have you received a revelation? Idiot. Have you talked to Gabriel today? Does this apply to you? No! Only applies to Muhammad, not to you. So you're saying that there are some rules that only apply to Muhammad yes. because he's receiving revelations and that that doesn't mean I should be yes. dressing the same way he did. Yes. yes, correct. Listen to your friends. We have your best You need to change. Well, well, so do I, actually. Well, well that, 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 that makes sense. I think, I think Giovanni is the only one who actually has a, a good case for dressing that way, so yeah. we, should probably, we should probably follow that. Yes. Yeah, I agree. 
Hello again. How y'all doing? You may notice a change. Our attire is different. Um, we're working on becoming more compliant and we're getting there step by step, thread by thread. Yeah, we had a little bit of a rough start this morning and we were all, you know, dressed a little different, but now we're all on the same page as you can see. So we're really happy about that. And you know what's interesting? I, I've noticed just as we were uh, uh, walking around a little bit that uh, ladies were paying a bit more attention to us, if you yeah. know what I mean. So this could get interesting real fast. Yeah. Gotta be the shoes. All right. See y'all tomorrow. See you guys. Wake up, motherfuckers! Oh, man, what time is it? Ow! Ow! Man, looking all right. We got our gear on. We got our wardrobe, but something's still not right about you two. What? I took off my dress. You took off the dress, but it's something here with the, the face and stuff. Let's ask the backpack. Backpack, what do we do about our hair? Sahih Muslim 597. It was narrated from Abu Hurairah that the Prophet said, The fitra is five things, or five things are part of the fitra circumcision, mm -hmm. shaving the pubes, Whoa. clipping the nails, plucking the armpit hairs, and trimming the mustache. Shaving your pubes? Plucking your armpit hair? Sounds like that's gonna hurt. Oh wait, guys, here's the schedule. Uh, 599. It was narrated that Anas bin Malik said, Anas said, a time limit was set for us for trimming the mustache, clipping the nails, plucking the armpit hairs, and shaving the pubes. That was not to be left for more than 40 days. So if there's a 40-day schedule, the good news is if we just get this over with, we don't have to do it again for the rest of the 30 days. All right, let's do it. Guys, check out what I found. So a fatwa is a ruling of scholars who study the Muslim sources and then apply the teachings of Muhammad to modern situations. And one of the situations that has arisen is whether it's acceptable to do waxing instead of plucking hairs individually. In other words, mm -hmm. waxing is just a way of plucking really, really right. fast. And so is that acceptable? Well, this was brought before a committee of scholars and let's go ahead and read it. With regard to using wax instead of plucking, this is permissible. The standing committee was asked, is it permissible for a man to use wax to remove hair such as armpit and pubic hair? They replied, yes, it is permissible to use that to remove armpit and pubic hair. So we can either do it the slow way or the fast way. Fast way. All right, Ouch Relief Stripless Hard Wax Kit. We've got uh, some popsicle sticks, popsicle sticks, uh, some oil, oil, numbing wipes, another popsicle stick, oh, wax, oh, and instructions. Gotta figure out how to make this stuff work. Safety instructions, who cares, who cares? Safety? Uh, hair length should be at least one quarter inch long, but no longer than half an inch. Do not exceed one minute on the first heating interval as wax can overflow and cause burns. Do not overheat, do not exceed one minute and 30 seconds total microwave time. Product can become dangerously hot and or overflow out of the jar 
risk of injury and severe burns may result. Blah, 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 blah. Oh. Hey, Giovanni, put this in the microwave for like five minutes or something. Don't worry. This is going to hurt you a lot worse than it hurts me. Five minutes, right? On the instructions? I don't remember. Ow! Ow, ow, ow! What do you think Hellfire is like? What do you think Hellfire is like? Ow! Stop, you're freaking crying. Oh, this can't be right. do this every oh. day of their lives. I thought you said this didn't hurt. Every girl does this oh, every my day of her life. Oh, is that molten lava? Hang on. Ow! Gosh. No gain, no pain. 100% oh. halal, baby. Oh. Head to toe. Yeah. Head to toe halal. Oh, my it's goodness. It's your new nickname, head to toe oh. halal. Just remember this all part of the fatwa. Yeah, fatwa, is that your name and your dress? Is it bleeding? Tell me it's bleeding. Is it bleeding? Uh, not bad. Ah, I swear it's bleeding. <gasps> Yo, you alright? Yo. Yo, quit faking, man. You're going all the way, right? Oh man, I'm putting on this wax. Oh, it hurts. Oh, it burned. Oh man, it burned! Ow! Oh, so hot! It's worth it, man! It... Oh, yeah, yeah, man, just do it for Allah! Oh! Man, this stuff is no joke on my beard! It burns so it's bad! Alright, I'm gonna pull it off! One, two, three. Oh, oh it hurts. Oh, it burns. Oh, it burns so bad. Keep going, man. <laughs> it's all it up. It's so bad. Oh, it hurts. So much pain. So much blood. Beard on top, but not on bottom. <laughs> okay to let it grow? <laughs> Just not down below, you heard? Uh, your guy's turn to take care of your uh, pubes. I don't, I don't know about that, bro. What do you mean you don't know? Alright, everyone else is asleep, so I guess I'll share a little bit about what we've been learning. When you hear about Islam in the West, you hear a lot about worshipping one God and avoiding idolatry and so on. But when you actually read what the prophet said, you find out what God is really concerned about. And you find out how much God is concerned about your facial hair and your armpit hair and your pubic hair and how you pluck and how you trim, how you go to the bathroom which foot you do this with first, which hand you do that with. These are the things that 
God is really concerned about. And without the prophet to tell us these things, we would never know. If you were trying to think of what God would really be concerned about, it would never cross your mind that he's concerned about the status of your pubic hair or which foot you step into the bathroom with first. You wouldn't think of that, never in a million years. And that's why Muhammad is such a blessing. He tells us what God is really like. Here's Fajr! Yo, wake up. Wake up. It's Fajr time. I am a real Arabian Fighting for the right of every Palestinian I am a real Arabian Fight for my life, fight for my rights Let me tell you something, brother About how glorious and majestic Allah truly is Allah created the heavens and the earth in six days Or eight days Depending on what surah you read That's right, brother There are no contradictions in the glorious Quran And after that he created the billions and billions of Sharia maniacs. And then after it was all said and done, Allah blew the minds of creation away by creating the 24-inch pythons, the very pythons that squeezes the lifeblood out of every kufar, the very pythons that take captive all these beautiful infidel blondie women. Because that's the booty. For Allah and his messenger and all those who do jihad, feast of Allah, what you gonna do when Sharia mania runs wild all over you? Hey, you got any napkins? Napkins? On. Yeah, clean my fingers. <laughs> napkins? You wanna see what the backpack has to say about that? Oh. Oh, okay, yeah. Backpack. How do we clean our fingers? Ready to read them and weep? Sahih al-Bukhari. 5456, narrated Ibn Abbas, the prophet said, when you eat, do not wipe your hands till you have licked it or had it licked by somebody else. Sahih Muslim, 5294, it was narrated that Ibn Abbas said, the messenger of Allah said, when one of you eats some food, let him not wipe his hand until he has licked it or had it licked. You either lick your own hand, or you have someone else lick it. Sahih Muslim, 5300. It was narrated from Jabir that the Prophet enjoined licking one's fingers and wiping the plate. And he said, you do not know in which part the blessing is. Do you see now? Do you see what's going on here? Allah has hidden a blessing somewhere in your food, and if there's food still on your fingers, even if it's grease or something like that, that could be the part where the blessing is hid. So you don't wipe your hands, wiping away your blessing until you've licked it, making sure that you get the blessing, or having someone else lick it, making sure they get the blessing. We got a lot of grease on these hands, so I guess there's a lot of blessing. And finally, Sahih Muslim 5303, it was narrated that Jabir said, I heard the prophet say, the shaitan, Satan, is present with any one of you in all his affairs, and he is even present with him when he eats. 
If one of you drops a morsel, let him remove any dirt on it, then eat it. Get it? Even if you drop your food on the ground, let him remove any dirt on it, then eat it, and not leave it for the shaitan. And when he has finished, let him lick his fingers, for he does not know in which part of his food the blessing is. So it all makes perfect sense. Allah hides a blessing in your food. You don't want Satan to get the blessing, which is what'll happen if you drop it on the floor. So you just wipe the dirt off it, you eat the food, and then you get the blessing that's in the food. And if you don't want it, you just give it to someone else. This all makes perfect sense. I don't know why you have some sort of problem with this. So lick your fingers or have someone else lick it so that someone, instead of Satan, gets the blessing. So you want some of this blessing? You want this blessing? You want my blessing? Do it! Do it! Do it! <laughs> yeah, lick that blessing. L eat that blessing all up. Get that, get that green part of the blessing. Get that brown, crunchy part of that blessing. Blessing tastes good. <laughs> blessing is straight from Allah. Oh my, <laughs> that is a blessing. If I've ever seen him blessed, <coughs> he's blessed. Uh, you feel blessed, bro? You know, some people would be completely grossed out by that, but if you think it's gross to suck on another person's dirty fingers, you're basically saying that the prophet himself was a gross, disgusting person, and I, for one, would never say something like that. Yeah, you know, sometimes... To get that blessing, you gotta eat that messing. Finger licking, finger licking, good job. Finger licking, I'm finger licking, good job. It's finger licking, it's finger licking, good job. I'm finger licking, finger licking, licking, good job. The best part of waking up is Fajr in your prayers. Oh. Oh. You know what's cool about these uh, Islamic dresses is that they like double as PJs. Let me tell you something, brother. Let me give you the key to success. If you want to live forever, if you want Jannah so you never die, but inherit all those beautiful big-breasted hoories who make my chest look like it's a small, tiny thing in comparison. Then here's what you gotta do. You got to perform the six pillars of Islam, brother. Starting with the first, Shahada. If you say, La ilaha illallah and Muhammad Rasulullah, then that's the first pillar. And you enter into the fold of Islam and you become a Sharia maniac. <sighs> but there's more to it, brother. Because Allah and his messenger expect a lot more if you want to get your hoories <laughs> who make my pythons look like they're little garden snakes, brother. Dude, don't move. Oh! Oh! What'd you do that for? You're welcome. Ah! Oh. There's a fly in my food! You Fred Durst look-alike. Oh. Well, throw it away and get another bowl, dude. Actually... Backpack! What do I do if a fly lands in my food? Looks like we've got some guidance from the Prophet himself. Sahih Bukhari 3320. Narrated Abu Huraira, the Prophet said, If a housefly falls into the drink of any one of you, he should dip it in the drink, for one of its wings has a disease, and the other has the cure for the disease. 
Whew! No, thank you. Uh-uh. I ain't doing that. Say what? Uh, Maybe you need a second opinion. Sunan Abu Dawood 3844. It was narrated that Abu Huraira said, The Messenger of Allah said, If a fly falls into the vessel of one of you, then immerse it. For on one of its wings is a disease, and on the other is a cure. When it falls, it falls onto the wing on which is a disease, so immerse it fully. Is that what it really says? That's what it really says, so if you want the cure for the disease that that fly is carrying, you've got to dunk that fly, man. Dunk the fly, man. Dunk it! Dunk it! Dunk it! Dunk it! Get all the cure! You want all the cure! You want all that fly's cure! You want all the cure! Now eat it! Dunk it! Eat it! Get it all! Get all the cure! Get all the cure! Woo! Man, people are getting sick, man. Why? Uh, I think there's a bug going around. Some kind of bug or something, so it's trying to be safe. Uh, we have a problem. I mean, why is Jamal sick? Oh, he's sick, though. He's sick as a dog. I don't know if Islam likes dogs, but uh, he's sick as a dog. And why is he sick? I don't know. Uh, I mean, think about what we've been eating. Anything that could have gave us sickness or maybe some kind of enemy could have poisoned it. Or He had he had a, a bowl of cereal. Yeah, yeah. And then... Seems fine. It wasn't and like, then I what, smacked the fly and it landed in the cereal. Yeah, it wasn't like pork cereal or anything, was it? No, no okay. pork in it. Okay. And then he dunked the fly because Muhammad said to dunk the flies... Yeah, because there could be blessing in the... No, because there's a disease on one wing, but then there's the cure for it. Yeah, yeah. So if, if it just landed in there and you got you got the, the bad side, then you would just get the disease. That's why you dunk it all the way and you get the cure as well. He ate the fly. The Jews could have poisoned the fly? There should still be the... Oh, whoa. What if they tore off the wing that has the cure? The Jews know stuff like that. They could have tore off the wing that had the cure in it and left whoa, 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 the whoa, disease whoa. wing for our friend. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. Hang on, hang on. We're, now we're going that. into conspiracy theories. There may actually be a much simpler explanation here. What? Maybe Jamal caught lactose intolerance. That's why he got sick. Yeah, that disease is communicable ability. I've heard and, about and that. You, there is no cure for that. Yeah, once you have it. Oh, dude. It means he, he can't. He can't have milk anymore. Just keep him away from milk. His body should be All good. Right, well, as long as we keep him away from milk, he'll be good. Yeah, yeah, so the, the whole point of that story is that, see, the guy didn't even really understand, you know, what was going on in the first place. So, oh, that must be, that's terribly interesting, man. I'm thirsty. You guys thirsty? No. You thirsty? Uh, <laughs> go get some muta. No, I'm serious, man. Oh, oh my, my goodness, goodness. cry me a river, dude. No, can we stop at a 7-Eleven or something? Actually, uh, I'm thirsty too, man. Are you guys uh, well, for, Look, guys, first of all, you don't even know what we're supposed to be drinking yet as Muslims. We haven't been Muslims that long. There's so many sources telling us what to do. You don't even know what we're supposed to do, guys. So, I mean, oh you don't God. know if you're supposed to be drinking well, a 7-Eleven. You're supposed to be drinking, what, Slurpees? 
Let's big gulps. Drink big gulps. You don't even Consult know what you're supposed to be doing as freaking Muslims. Oh, you need to oh, read it first. Is. You need pack. to read first. Consult the backpack. I got it right We here. can consult the backpack. I'll yeah. pull over here. Okay, okay. Right beside this leg. All right. All right, we got a couple of sources from the backpack. We have Jammy at Termid He number 66. Abu Said Al Kudri narrated it was said, O oh Allah's Messenger, shall we use the water of Buddha well? So this is some well, the Buddha well to perform ablution while it is a well in which menstruation rags flesh of dogs and the putrid are dumped Allah's messenger said indeed water is pure nothing makes it impure so Muhammad himself said that water is not made impure by anything so if even if you have dead animals thrown into it used menstrual cloths water is still pure we need to pay attention to that as Muslims all right and we got another one Sunan Ibn Majah number 520 it was narrated that Jabir bin Abdullah said we came to a pond in which there was a carcass of a donkey so we refrained from using the water until the messenger of Allah came to us and said water is not made impure by anything then we drank from it and gave it to our animals to drink and we carried some with us so I mean think about that right they're worried about the water because it's got a dead animal a dead donkey floating in it and Muhammad he gives them the knowledge that water is not made impure by anything and then they start drinking the water so you guys need to understand whatever you've been taught in school it doesn't apply even if you find dead animals in water it's still pure and still good to drink according to the Prophet himself so we've got water right here if you're thirsty go get some there is no 7-eleven okay all right. All right. We'll be back. Muhammad says so. Don't be taken forever. Okay. All right. You stay here. Modern science is wrong. Muhammad was right. Aquafine ain't got nothing on Muhammad's recipe. Word. I know who I for, man. exact same time? Uh, Why didn't I get it? Ever since we drank that damn carry-on filled water. 
Oh no. There's only one possible explanation. Some Jews must have poisoned our dead animal carcass water. Well, my brothers, it seems I'm the protector of the group now, protecting you from those who would do you harm. While you ignore me, I've been plotting, planning, and figuring out how to protect you from the Jews who want you dead. Backpack informed me Muhammad has the answer, as he has the answer for everything. Sahih al-Bukhari, 5445. Narrated Sa'ad, Allah's messenger said, He who eats seven ajwa dates every morning will not be affected by poison or magic on the day he eats them. If you eat seven, one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, seven ajwa dates. You can't be affected by poison that day. Now, would you like proof? How many ajwa dates did you have yesterday morning? Oh, zero? And what happened? You were poisoned! and it affected you. If that's not enough, we have what's called multiple attestation. Sahil Bukhari, 5779, narrated Sa'ad. I heard Allah's messenger saying, whoever takes seven ajwa dates in the morning will not be affected by magic or poison on that day. Were you affected by poison? Yes, when some Jews poisoned you. How many dates did you have? Zero. How many should you have had? Seven. You see the problem? Perhaps a demonstration will help. You know what these are? Ajwa dates. Ajwa dates. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. How simple could this be? Obedience. Obedience. You're stubborn. All you have to do is take seven of these.
there's a very hard part in the middle of every Ajwa date. It's hard to swallow at certain teachings. That's where the blessing comes in. And now, unlike you, because you won't eat them, I am immune to all forms of poison. How do I know? Because Muhammad said it. So if I were not immune to all forms of poison, Muhammad would be a false prophet, and we know that he is a true prophet. Still not convinced? The works, toilet bowl cleaner. Keep out of reach of children. Danger. Is this a danger? Is hydrogen chloride a danger? Not to me, because that would be a poison. And I am, according to Muhammad, immune to poisons, because I had seven Ajwa dates. Why is this not impressing you? You want proof? You want proof? Doesn't taste good, but it can't hurt me, can it? Hmm? 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 Do I have to do all the work here? Woo! Ah, strongest thing I've drank since becoming a Muslim. If swallowed, call Poison Control Center or doctor immediately for treatment advice. No, because I follow Muhammad. So let me look at my chart here. We pumped your friend's stomach. We found quite a bit of toilet bowl cleaner, seven partially digested dates, and it looks like he got here just in time. He must be dumber than one of those kids putting Tide Packets in their mouths. They look just like candy. Have you seen those things? Wait, they stole the dates out of my stomach? No wonder I feel sick! Roger prayer time!
Wake up! Wake up! Wake up! Get up! Pods of prayer time! Get up! Come, come, come! Still sick? Jamal! Wake up, man! I'm worried about these guys, man. Both of my friends. All this stuff we've been doing's got him real sick. He's been in the bathroom for a few hours now. I took these prescription antibiotics, man. It really helped me. But they won't take it. He said it's kaffir medicine. I don't know what to do, man. Jamal! Wait a minute. Backpack will tell me. Backpack! What do I do if my friends are sick, but they won't take any kaffir medicine? How do I help them? Something, Sunan Ah uh, Nasai 307. It was narrated from Anas bin Malik that some Bedouins from Yurana came to the Prophet and became Muslim. But the climate of Al Medina did not suit them. Their skin turned yellow and their stomachs became swollen. The Messenger of Allah sent them to some pregnant camels of his and told them to drink their milk and urine. until they recovered. Then they killed the camel herder and drove the camels away. The messenger of Allah sent people after them and they were brought back. Their hands and feet were cut off and their eyes were smoldered with burning nails. The commander of the believers, Abu Malik said to Anas, when he was narrating this hadith to them, were they being punished for kafir or for a sin? He said for kafir, sahih. So, if you've got a sickness that you can't cure, Muhammad says the solution is camel urine. Sounds like I need to make a trip to the zoo. First I gotta pee. Jamal's still like this, super worried about him. Good thing I went to the zoo though, I got just what Muhammad ordered. I got just what prescribed. This camel urine, it'll do the trick every time. Okay, nice and slow, easy. Take the medicine. I feel like it's doing the trick already, this is great. be better in no time. Whew, feeling better. Hey guys, it's uh, Giovanni here, and I'm still taking precautions, you know, even though I'm feeling better. Um, you know, you can never be too sure. I used to be sort of a germaphobe before I became a, a Muslim, and, um, you know, I'm learning a lot about germ theory from Muhammad that I never knew before. So I got to take that into account. So I don't know if this is something I should wear, shouldn't wear. 
But uh, there's a lot to learn. I mean, look at all these books. You know, I mean, I mean that's, a, that's quite a lot, right? So I, I'm still going through the sources. And I can't find the backpack anywhere right now. But anyways, to celebrate, um, got some shirts. Um, I just wanted to show you these. Check this out. Religion of Peace. Yeah, it's awesome, right? Kind of like a get well gift to myself. Um, I was wearing out and about, and a guy tried to be funny, you know, make a joke. He's like, oh, religion of peace? It's more like the religion of the peace. Man, I almost popped the dude in his mouth for implying that Islam was violent, you know? Talking about Islam that way. But uh, there's some other ones. This is a great one. You know, this is for Dennis. 100% halal. He's going to love rocking that. He He's recovering right now, but I'm pretty much sure he's he's uh, almost better, uh, you know, even though they they stole the dates out of his stomach and stuff, um, you know, we snuck him some new ones, and I'm pretty sure he's gonna gonna be okay. He's gonna do fine. Got this for uh, uh, Jamal here. Check this out. I submit. That's a really cool one. But um, uh, you know, I kind of got a confession to make. When I gave uh. Jamal the camel pee. I put some extra stuff in it. Originally, I was going to put this, but I changed my mind. I, I didn't end up using that. I ended up using this stuff. It's like a concoction of antibiotics, and I snuck it in there, and I'm, uh, I don't know. I'm just worried. I don't know if, um, I don't know if that's okay. You know, I'm still learning what it means to be a Muslim and everything, and, um, I didn't really tell him. It's kind of deceptive. So I need you guys to help. I need you guys to tell me if um, it's okay to be deceptive as a Muslim. You know, is that okay? Um, can I can I deceive? You know, I need. I, I just want to know from you guys. Help me out in the comment section. Let me know. Like, uh, tell me. Maybe you know some sources I don't know. I, is it okay? If if I lie, you know, stretch the truth, deceive as a Muslim, you know, because I, I don't, like I said, I don't know. So if you guys could let me know, just leave some comments below. Let me know, you know, uh, if, if that's okay, if that's a problem. And uh, I'll, I'll listen to you guys. I can't find that stupid backpack anywhere. And like I said, look at all this stuff. I, I can't go through all this. So just leave some comments. Let me know. I really appreciate you guys' help. Thanks. It's my father, I can pray if I want to, pray if I want to, and I really want to because I'll get burned alive if I do not. I love my dog as much as I love you, but you may think my dog will always come. All he asks from me is the food to give him strength. All he ever needs is love, and that he knows he'll get. What? Oh! <laughs> Good, Mrs. Scruffles. He's cute, isn't he, Mr. Scruffles? Come here. When he's uh, eating, he doesn't really pay attention, though. That's a good boy. Come here. I don't kiss my dog, though. I don't do all that. It's gross. Oh my freaking goodness. It's a good boy. Here. Here. You're following the teachings of Muhammad, and it hasn't occurred to you even once to ask the backpack what Muhammad thought of dogs. What could Muhammad possibly have against Mr. Scruffles? Backpack, what does Muhammad say about dogs?
Sahih Muslim 4016. It was narrated from Aban Umar that the Messenger of Allah ordered that dogs be killed. Be what? Sahih Muslim 4017. It was narrated that Aban Umar said the Messenger of Allah ordered that dogs be killed and he sent the word to all quarters of Ahmadiyya saying that they should be killed. That they should be what? That they should be played with? No, that, that they, they should, should be, be killed. That they should be killed. Cuddled. Killed. Petted. Killed. Played with. Killed. Played with. Keep reading. Sahih Muslim 4018. It was narrated that Abdullah bin Umar said the messenger of Allah used to order that dogs be killed. And I went throughout Al Medina and we did not spare any dog, but we killed it. Killed to it. To such an extent that we would even kill the dog of a woman belonging to the desert people. Kill dog. Kill. Your prophet ordered you to kill, kill dogs. Dog. And you're sitting here playing with one. He didn't say Mr. Scruffles though, so. All the pay I need comes the shining through his eyes. I don't need no cold water to make me realize. The prophet ordered us to kill the dog. Yeah, and you're sitting here freaking petting one, dude. Do, do you care at all? I mean, are you taking this remotely seriously? Yes, he I said to have to kill, kill the dog. I care. Are you committed? Dog. He We're says gonna have to kill the dog. Kill, dog. Kill, kill the dog. Kill the dog. Kill dogs. Kill dogs. Kill dogs. Kill dogs. Kill dogs. This house is halal. Mr. Scruffles? <laughs> if it makes you feel any better, he got a nice one on the back of my leg. Mr. Scruffles? Where is he now? Don't worry, I'll give Mr. Scruffles a nice burial. Okay. We're recording. Islam is a way of life. It takes sacrifice. Sacrifice. We're proud of our brother here. Sometimes, it's a cost, and he followed through. Sometimes we have a way of life that we learn from the world, not from Allah. And Allah shows us a clear path, and we must follow it. In every way of life. Just celebrated his birthday, man. It was his birthday. Got him a special bed and everything.
Baja time now. I am a real Arabian fighting for the right of every Palestinian. I am a real Arabian fight for my life, fight for my rights. Let me tell you something, brother. Let me tell you how you can be like Halal Hogan, brother, and become more Sharia compliant. This is what you need to do if you want Sharia mania all over you. Not only do you pray five times a day, but you gotta eat your seven Ajwa dates. Yeah, brother, dunk your fly in your drink, cause one of the wings have the disease and the other one has the antidote. Ooh, yeah, that's something only Allah and his messenger could reveal. Only Allah could do that. And make sure you drink your camel urine, especially if your stomach aches, and milk it when you take the urine and you take the milk. You got an unbeatable combination, and that's when you're gonna see the 24 inch pythons get bigger and bigger and bigger. <laughs> it seems we have a problem here. Yesterday, I pronounced this house halal because I killed the dog that was therein. And yet, here you sit, looking at a picture of said dog. Backpack, what does Muhammad say about pictures of dogs? Ah, backpack, magic backpack, I'm the nigga that Mac attack backpack. With this sack, reacts, I'm like a maniac. I got stacks of facts to keep you all on track. Sahib Bukhari, 3225, narrated Abu Talha. I heard Allah's messenger saying, angels do not enter a house wherein there is a dog or some images or pictures of living creatures, a human being or an animal. So it isn't just pictures of a dog. Allah doesn't allow pictures of any living thing. This is a picture of my adopted son, Marco. Well, we're about 10 days into our journey now, and I think now I'm starting to gain a fuller appreciation and understanding of Islam. Islam means submission, and Allah gives us so many small ways in our daily lives that we can submit. So that way, when it comes to submitting in a big way, we're already trained to submit in the biggest way possible, even if we don't like it. That's what's so beautiful about Islam. That is the power of submission.
لاح فجرا فارقب نصر الحديد دولة الإسلام قامت بدماء الصادقين Build, man. We are broke. This is crazy. Look at oh. how hair care and uh, the shaving products and the, all the doctor visits and going to the zoo and. I had to buy that expensive suit so I could look like a black Muslim, and I was wrong. Yeah, here's one for a dress. I don't I mean, know. My goodness. So much here. We're, we're we're having some serious cash flow problems, guys. Yeah. Following Muhammad's teachings is really getting us into debt. It's costly. It seems like we must not be following something right here. Yeah, something's off. What are we gonna do? Pack some back. Backpack. According to the example set by the Prophet Muhammad, how should we be earning money? There is no mix-up. The Prophet can't fix up. <laughs> Once again, Allah has blessed us with the answer. This is the life of Muhammad, Sirat Rasul Allah. And we can read the passage. Actually, I don't think we can read the passage. It starts on page 281, and then 282, 283, 284, 285, 286, 287, 288, 289. What's it say? What's it it's, say? It's all about Muhammad launching raids against caravans trying to rob people so muhammad himself the perfect example for mankind the one that all muslims are required to follow supported his religion through robbery what does this mean for us my next door neighbor let's pay him a visit you well, know what i mean well we could uh we could go up and knock on his door. He's a Christian. He'll probably just let us in. But he, he, he's not going to trust us because we're Muslims. Well, ooh, I got an idea. I'll knock on his door, but I'll take off my kufi. That'll do it. Yes? Excuse me, sir. Do you have any gray poupon? But of course. Uh -huh. Don't fight it. 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 to say I'm a little disappointed in your performance. My task was performed perfectly. I choked a dude out. You guys had one job, get the most valuable stuff. Well, and didn't... what do you come up with? You didn't get any great coupon, so it wasn't that great. What did you come up with? We have, well, oh great, a broom. From my Christian neighbor, we stole this broom, which will come in very handy because all those broken pitchers are still all over the house with the glass and everything else and ashes and stuff. So I think, I think Jamal made a good choice by getting the broom. Well, that can come in handy. It's not gonna solve our bill problem. And what do we have next? Oh look, a 40 year old television. We can really pawn this for two cents. Well, it's probably more like 20 years old, but I didn't get it for the TV. I knew it was broken. It's the VHS tape. There's a VHS tape. Inside that TV, man. It could be anything. Okay, and we have, a, a, of course, a, a snow globe. That's real good. Well, so that was Jamal, but I think it was a good idea because there's little baby Jesus in here. And according to the Quran, he speaks from the cradle. Wind He's... it up and see if it talks. Wait! Is, oh. that, is that Mary, the third person of the Trinity, according to Christianity? Yes. It's only music. 
Hey, listen, you got nothing but garbage. There's nothing here that we could even get a dollar for. And you guys get, oh look, a broken clock. This is beautiful. Is this a decoration because it doesn't work? Well, it's gonna be right twice a day, first of all. So it has plenty of value. Maybe we set it for prayer time. I can even hear the parts rattling around. There's something in there, man. Yeah, parts of a clock. It's broken. I don't think it's parts of a clock. Think it's change? It's taped up. Let's cut this off. Oh, nice. What's it say? What's it say? What's it say? Oh my goodness. It's a safe, dude. Why did you go to Canada? Money for starving kids. That's us. <laughs> Praise Allah. Yeah. Our bills are paid. Talk fear. Allahu Akbar. Talk fear. Allahu Akbar. Yo, Gio, ever since we jacked your neighbor, we got more money than we had in a long, long time. Allah is really blessing us for our faithfulness and following the example and pattern of Muhammad by robbing people. We, 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 gotta be, we gotta be faithful, so we're gonna have to spend this money the Islamic way. Yeah, let's find out what that is. Backpack! What's the most fun Islamic way we can spend this money that we robbed from my neighbor? Sahih Bukhari 5075, narrated Abdullah. We used to participate in the holy battles led by Allah's messenger and we had nothing, no wives, with us. So we said, shall we get ourselves castrated? He forbade us that and then allowed us to marry women temporarily by giving her even a garment. And then he recited to us, oh you who believe, Make not unlawful the taibat. All that is good as regards foods, things, deeds, beliefs, persons, whichever Allah has made lawful to you. So what this seems to be saying is that we can have temporary marriages, have sex with the women, pay them in, say, a coat, and we better not Stop ourselves from doing this because the prophet recited a Quranic verse saying, do not forbid these things. I've heard some of the brothers call this muta. Found it. Ain't nothing like Islam, you heard me? Yeah, uh, Mr. Hodella? Huh? Oh, Dilla. Oh, okay, Mr. Hodilla. Hey, how you doing? So, uh, my name's Jamal, and I'm here with my friend Gio. Uh, we're a couple of Muslims looking for a woman to be our wife for the night. Muta. No, no, just one. We can share. We're Muslim. Make sure. Uh, can you hold on for a minute, please? Sharia compliant. Make sure she's covered. Break oh, 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 Okay. Uh, yeah, so my friend and I want a Muslim woman in a burqa. Okay. Okay, w one second, let me see. He says that it's, he says that it's 20 extra dollars for role play. 
Go play. Yeah, exactly. I don't know what that is, but we got it, so let's yeah. do it. I, right. I don't either. Okay. All right. Uh, okay, yeah. Yeah, we'll take it. That's fine. One hour? Sure. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Muta. Yeah, buddy. Oh, she's here. Did you finish the contract? Yeah, yeah. I'm a Muta. Oh, you got it? All right. Come in, it's unlocked. So now what? What do we do? I, I don't know. Tell her. Tell her we want to see some skin. Okay. Um. Uh, um uh, hi. Hi. Uh, could you uh show us some skin, please? Talk about a jihadi, you know what I'm saying? She is the bomb. I-E-D-B-O-M-B. Yo, yo, how are we going to decide who goes first? I don't know, just ask her. Should we just have her flip a coin? Sure. I don't know, just ask her. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, uh, ma'am, if, if you had to choose between two flavors of ice cream, would you choose chocolate or vanilla? <laughs> Well, how about a swirl? Ah, ah, ah. Muta contract first. Don't let your dreams be dreams. Woo -wee! Woo! That was wild. Why yeah. am I smiling? Cause Why are you happy? Because it's little Debbie. Because Muta. So, Muta, temporary marriage, allowable. In fact, Muhammad said, don't forbid it from yourself. Don't be castrating yourself. Got to get that Muta. Even recited a Quranic verse. Got to get that Muta. Man, that example he set. Got the Muta and the Luta. Yeah, I mean, we rob my Christian neighbor. So that's how we got the money, and then we got the hoe and the hoe dilla. And then we got the honey. I mean, he provided the money. And the honey. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Not any <laughs> problems. You know what I'm saying? Let me tell you something, brother, that's so glorious and majestic. Let me tell you about the hoodies of paradise. Ooh, yeah. As my friend Macho would say, ooh, yeah. What or who are the hoodies? They are the firm breasted whores of paradise. Did you know that each one of them, their chest will be larger than my chest? And that is a feat that only Allah can perform. <laughs> Look at this chest, baby. But can you imagine a hoodie with a bigger chest than mine? And you know what's beautiful about those hoodies? Every time you have sex with them, every time that they experience one of the 24-inch pythons, brother, 
they go back to being virginal again. And that is the miracle of Allah and his messenger. Ha 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 What you gonna do when the hurry smack you with one of their chests all over you? Yo, you guys, let's go get some more Muta. You know what I'm saying? Yo, you guys want to go get some more Muta? Muta? Yeah, it makes it make you feel good. Money. Muta costs money. No Do you money. see this, what I'm looking at? You got no money. These man. are bills. A lot of them are past due. Not Bro, no money, dude. I'm trying to get some more Moo Moo, baby. You, you know what I'm saying? You can't even pay the Did doctor, you? dummy. Some more Moo Moo. We need some more Moo Moo money. Oh. We need some more money. We're running out of money. We're all si <coughs> I'm running out of Muta. Guys, I'm running out of Muta. We're all sick. Guys, and we want to go rob another Christian? Rob another Christian. There, there's got to be a better way. We'll go around the get... same Christian. He had all that money from charity before. We took it. He might have been getting more uh, money from charity from kids and stuff. And then we can get some more Muta, baby. There's got to be a better way to get money oh, as Muslims oh. besides robbing Christians. There's got to be oh, a better way. just shut up. I'm about to throw up. Backpack, what's a better way to get money from Christians? Surah 9, verse 29. Fight those who believe not in Allah, nor the last day, nor hold that forbidden which hath been forbidden by Allah and His Messenger, nor acknowledge the religion of truth from among the people of the book, Jews and Christians, until they pay the jizya with willing submission and feel themselves subdued. You fight them until they pay the jizya. This means that they become your dhimmi. It's a second class citizen who acknowledges his inferiority by paying you half his money. And the justification for it is in the next verse. It says the Jews call Ezra son of God and Christians call Christ the son of God. Calls on Allah to destroy us. So basically Allah is going to destroy them and we force them to pay us in the meantime to help them acknowledge their true status. That's good. That's weird, though. You know, I never knew the Jews called Ezra the son of God. But uh, anyway, this is well, better. Who, who are you going to believe, Jews or Allah? Allah says that the Jews say it. Allah every time. Can we just stop fighting about this? More money, more muta. All, All right. right. I don't feel like I can even move. So, uh, Giovanni, you go find us a dimmy. I know just the person. Oh, this look. is a steady, reliable source of income. Better than just robbing shush, a person one time. Shush. We're going to rob them again and again and again and again. Shut up. Go get us a dimmy, dude. And all I need is this phone. I'll be back. Yo. See you all right? Yo. Hello? It's Giovanni. You're a friendly neighborhood Salafi man. Hey, look, man, look. I don't want any trouble. That's why I'm calling. I want to help you. Oh. Oh, really? Oh, oh, that's cool. What's up? Yes, um, if you want to avoid the trouble of having your neck removed from your shoulders, then you'll come right next door right now and sign a contract. Uh, why would I do that? Listen, the trouble I'm talking about is me and my brothers. Remember them? Coming over to your house again, robbing you, taking your other broom, eating your food, raping your wife, killing all your little children, unless one of them is a minor of marriable age, which means she could be approximately six to nine, in which case we prefer to kidnap her. Eating my food? Yes. Only if it's halal. Do you have any dates? Uh, I don't know about this. Listen, we know where you live. Uh, 
All right, how's it going, YouTube? We are continuing our vlogs. The Halal Heroes are continuing the vlogs, exploring our 30-day journey following Muhammad's teachings. And today is an exciting mm -hmm. day because Giovanni made his very first dimmy. Tell us about that. All it takes is a little intimidation, extortion, and a phone call. This is the coolest thing ever. Muhammad's teachings are just... My mind's blown right now. I mean, you threaten someone after harming them, and you tell them you're going to threaten them further unless they pay you money. And they believe you. Yes, which is because well, you've hurt them once. I know. Which is exactly what we did to our neighbor, and now we get half his paycheck. Half of his paycheck. Imagine, he's out there doing the work. <laughs> he's out there doing the work, but he's giving it to us. Are you understanding? Are you people understanding how wonderful and amazing Islam is? Have you understood how Allah blesses us that he makes other people do the work and we reap the benefits? Mm -hmm. Have you understand how amazing this is? This is the power of Islam. Islam is super great. I mean, everyone should become a Muslim. Wait, if everyone became that a Muslim, yeah, that wouldn't work. then how would we get the money? Well, that wouldn't work, right? That's why not everyone's going to become become a Muslim. Because then we couldn't have dimmies. Then, then, then who's going to be in hell? Thur, come on. So, uh, money, no, I, I mean, uh, stay on. I'll stay on track here now. Yeah. Now think about how amazing this is, right? How amazing this is. How is this not from God? Who could have thought? Who could have thought of a brilliant plan like this? You threaten people and make them pay you money. And then they're paying you for their own protection from the threat that you pose. This is Islam. This is the Quran. These are the teachings of Muhammad. Praise Allah. <laughs> Quick question. Two days ago, you and Giovanni disappeared for several hours and came back with half our stolen money gone. Now, where were you and what were you doing? Yo, I gotta go get some muta. You know what I'm saying? Some muta. You feel me? The heck is muta? You don't know what some muta is? Oh, you don't know what muta is? I'll show you. Hello, Mr. Dilla. This is a faithful, devout Muslim. I heard that you have access to some major, major muta. Sharia-tastic. I am currently in the market for some major, major muta. Excellent. Little Debbie, huh? Sounds healthy. May I make a special request? Hair covered or uncovered? Need you even ask? What kind of pervert do you think I am? Uncovered hair is immodest and haram unacceptable for a mutta ho, I mean mutta wife. Yes, I will take the burka package for 100, please. I'll send you the location now and I'll see her soon. Well, I won't really see her, I mean I'll just see her eyes maybe because she'll be dressed like a beekeeper <laughs> but you know what i mean <laughs> Talk about a money trail. Hello, my halal hottie. Ah, yes, my darling. That was 
everything I dreamed that it would be based on what my friends Jamal and Giovanni described. Oh, so Muta Muta Jamal Giovanni again? What? Are you talking about Muta with other men when you're my Muta wife at the moment? Backpack! What does the Quran say if I fear rebellion from my Muta wife? Well, I have to praise Allah for his perfect and eternal word, for he has revealed in Surah 4, verse 34, that if I fear disloyalty or ill conduct on behalf of one of my wives, I warn her and then banish her to a separate bed and then beat her. And so I say, don't do that again. Get in that other bed. And now... <sighs> Greetings, all our brothers and sisters and all of you filthy, disgusting animals who are lower than the lowest of creatures because you do not submit to Allah Almighty. If you're tuning in to our vlog for the first time, lately we have been exploring the wonders of Mukta. <laughs> now, Giovanni, could you explain Mukta for our viewers? Imagine marriage on a timer. And when it goes ding, the marriage is done. But in that window, say it's an hour, maybe two hours, you get marriage benefits. And that's called muta. Now think about the power and the wisdom of Allah Almighty. Allah knows that we have desires. And he is concerned for our deepest, darkest, carnal desires. Mm -hmm. But there's a problem here. Because simply hiring a prostitute... That would be wrong. No, no. That would be fornication or adultery. And that would not please Allah. Mm -mm. But Allah Almighty has found a loophole. <laughs> the loophole that he has found is that if you simply marry the prostitute for the hour that you're sleeping with her, well then, what wrong is there? Mm -hmm. And so we can hire all the prostitutes we want and let them fulfill all our desires. And it is all pleasing to Allah. This is the glory of Islam. Praise be to Allah. Takbir. Allahu loophole. Takbir. Allahu loophole. Takbir. Allahu loophole. Takbir. <laughs> Dang! Oh, guys, Who slap little Debbie. Uh, Eat it. Uh, actually, I slapped my wife, and according to the Quran. People can beat their wives into submission. So all I have to do, I have to warn her, then I banish her. Are you even listening to me? I said I have to warn her, then banish her. Can you hear? Can you hear? I said I warn her, Surah 4, verse 30. My coffee! Surah 4, verse 34, I banish her to a separate bed, and then I can... Show me out! 
your faithfulness. You will not believe what we just did. Fight those who will not submit to Allah. It's, this was the greatest day in ever. history. Ever. No holds barred. Oh my goodness. This dirty kafir tried to challenge us on the Quran, trying to tell us that we can't beat our Muslim wives Yo. into submission when they rebel against us. And back, 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 back. Yo. Yo. Yeah. You see that right hook though? That right hook? Oh, Ooh, knock them out. I got a momento. Yeah. Hello, hello, Hogan. Hello, Islam. Islam is about submission, including Ooh. submission holds. How's that for a <laughs> selfie, dog? Yeah. <laughs> الإسلام قامت بدماء الصادقين. Guys, I bet you're thinking I'm going to wake you up by then. Some happy song. But music is haram. So get up for your fajr and do not expect me to sing. Now what is sadaqah? Every money you have left over after paying your bills, brother. You gotta give 2.5% for charitable causes, one of which includes financing the jihadis who fight in the way of Allah. <sighs> what greater reward can it be than financing someone from attacking the kuffar, taking their babes as captives, even married ones? Oh, brother, that's a taste of Jannah on earth, if you ask me, brother. Hold on. Yo, did you guys, by the way, did you see that some people are holding a cartoon contest to draw Muhammad? Like cartoons of Muhammad. Yeah, there's going to be like hundreds of people drawing cartoons of our prophet. Pictures and images yeah. drawn by Kufar? Yes, That's of illegal. Prophet Muhammad? No, yeah, That's it's illegal. a bunch of, You can't do that. Yeah, it's a bunch of racist and Islamophobes wow. um, like Robert Spencer and Pamela Geller. Robert yeah, they're, they're holding Spencer. a contest to draw pictures. I think Robert Spencer is a Jew. Freedom of speech was never meant to allow you to offend people. Yes, exactly. Yeah, freedom of speech is only protecting speech with which you agree, not things like drawing pictures of Muhammad. We, 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 got, we got to do something. But hey, you know what? Today's Mosque Day. Oh, We've got the greatest, the greatest Muslim scholar <laughs> in the world oh, at our disposal. I'm looking forward to this too. All right, well, let, let's get going. We can go to the mosque. All right, let's do it. why you cannot trust the science of the Kufar. Because Kafir science is aimed at declaring war on Allah and his messenger. And let me prove it to you. In the glorious Quran al karim it says it is Allah who has created seven heavens and the earths as many. So now count. If there are seven heavens, how many earths? Seven. But the Kufar will tell you there's only one earth. So now you explain to me, Ya Akhi, Ya Akhi, Ya Akhi, explain to me if the Quran is the word of Allah, Azwajal, the creator of heaven and earth, and he tells you the earth is seven like heavens, but the Kafir science says there's only one. Who will you believe? Allah! Takbir! Allah! Takbir! Allah! The Kafir science also says the earth is a sphere. It's stuck for Allah Rabbul Alameen, Allahu Akbar. Because according to the Quran, in the glorious surah, chapter 88, verse 20, it says, see the earth, how we spread it. The Arabic is sutuhat. Sutuhat means to make it flat like pancake. So if Allah, Azawajal, tells us the earth is flat, but the Kafir science says it is wrong. Who will we believe? Allah! Allah! That to the Kafirs! Takbir! 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 Allah! 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 Allah
Also, in the Quran we are told the earth is not orbiting in a ocean like the Kafir science tells us. It tells us it is the sun that is orbiting. Do you know where the sun travels to? Does anyone know? Tell me. In a pool of muddy water. That's where it descends. You are close, but no cigar. Ya akhir. According to the Quran, the sun travels, and this is the chapter in the glorious Quran, chapter 36, verse 38. The sun travels and prostrates before the throne of Allah Azza wa Jal. Allahu Akbar. Even the sun prostrates before Allah. And it waits in prostration until it tells the sun, because the sun is Muslim. What is a Muslim? One that submits to the will of Allah. The sun prostrates its will to Allah, waiting for Allah Azza wa Jal to tell it to return to its orbit. And then, and only then, Ya Khir, it descends in a muddy spring. So you are right in the way it descends, but it travels to the throne of Allah, which is above the seven heavens. Allahu Akbar. But the Kafir sign says, the sun does not travel to the throne, nor does it set in the spring of muddy water. So my question to you, if Allah's messenger says the earth is seven and flat, and if Allah's messenger says the sun travels and prostrates and then descends into a muddy spring, but Kafir science it's wrong, who will you believe? Allah! Allah! Who will you believe? Allah! Allah! That is why we declare jihad on the Kufar science. Allah Akbar! Allah! 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 Hey, we are leaving the masjid and we just heard a powerful, fiery message by the shake. Man, I'm still shaking in my boots. Oh, Wore my sandals, good. you know. Yeah. You know, with his knowledge, with his knowledge, you can see why the unbelievers hide from him. It's obvious. Yes. They hide from, I mean, could you imagine what he would do to one of them like in a in a public debate oh, if, he's, if he stood Total on stage? Total embarrassment. It would be a massacre. Shame. He'll debate anybody. He'll debate anybody. Massacre. anybody, massacre. anybody. Name them. Yeah. Name them. Go ahead. Yeah. I dare you. That's our shake. Yes. Yeah, man. These these Christians doctrine is so dirty, nasty, filthy. Their yeah. book knows nothing of science. Our book knows about yeah. science. This book's so corrupt. It's got its science but wrong, man. They knew about science before science was even science. That's what's so amazing about it. It's Islam, Islam invented science. Yeah. Islam no, invented I, science. I've heard that too. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And the shaykh proves it. I, I just wish there would be a day when some Christian would show up at the mosque and they're, try to they'll challenge. They'll never do it. They'll never do it. Not in a million years. But you, yeah, we both know that would never happen because they're running. You know, that's all they that's all they know how to do. That they, in itself is a miracle. This is how you know the Quran is true because of the scientific miracles in the Quran. Unbelievable. Yeah, they just run, man. They run quicker than little baby Jesus did when he ran to Egypt when he was fleeing from Herod. That's how quick those oh, Christians Lord. run, man. Yeah. All right, well, let's go learn some more science, fellas. All right. <laughs> Brother, I swear by Allah, and I swear by the moon, and I swear by the stars, and everything in creation, that when I started drinking that mixture, my guns went from 18 to 24, brother. Talk about a mega drink. Talk about a drink that just makes your muscles blow up. And yes, pun intended, blow up. Ha 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 ha. Yeah, brother, there's nothing like camel urine. And there's nothing like milk. Especially after you eat seven Ajwa dates. If you don't believe me, brother, try it. And then you're going to see Sharia mania run wild all over you. Guys, we sit around here reading every day, studying every day, watching Halal Hogan every single day, learning. And if you look around, you don't see any Muslims preaching what real Islam is. Yeah. If you ask them what Islam is, they're like, oh, you need to you know, pray and just submit to Allah. But they don't tell you how Islam requires you yeah. to submit to Allah. It's about peeing properly. It's about, it's about going number two properly. It's about drinking camel pee. It's about doing all of these things, dunking your flies. 
and people just don't know about these things. Don't so what the muta? Yeah. Um, I'm not I'm never gonna forget the muta. Hardly ever. anyone is practicing <laughs> muta. Hardly anyone's practicing muta. How they should exactly you it, it, robbing, making dimmies, all these things that are the core of Islam, and they're not being preached here. No one gets it. No they one don't get it. That means the true Islam of Muhammad is not being preached. Guess what? Guess what? If we don't do it, who's going to? Yeah. We need to take to the streets today yes. and get out there. I don't even want all that mutzah, but I got it. I got to do it for everybody else. You, you have to, I mean? and, and you're, you're, you're obeying the prophet here. Yeah. Right? Yeah. All right. You go start making some signs. We'll okay. get ready. Okay. All right. Let's do it. All right. Yeah. Guys, I finished the signs. Let's do this. Woo! So we're out here for Dawa, and there's some Jews on the corner, and we're going to get them off our corner. Talk beer! Hello! Oh, Hello. Take it off! Squad to pee! Squad to pee! I'm in toy! Kill your dog, kill him now, filthy. Hello, heroes. Yo, one, two, three, Muhammad told us squat to pee. So you know, I bring Islamic hip hop. You know, I pee, I got to squat. Squat, squat down, I got to frown. Pee but out now, you hear a sound. It's Muhammad speaking to me through the Q U R A N, no E. But I got camel pee. I went to the zoo, and what do I see? I see this two humped mammal. He's right there, he's called a camel. I'm like an animal with my cup. And then I say, hey, yo, camel sup. I need you real quick to spin. I need some of your yellow urine. Squat to pee. You got a squat to pee. That's right. Punishment of the grave. That's right. Muta, Muta wanted, Muta wanted now. Yeah, forget the carriage. Muta, wife, baby, carriage. Bump that, it's temp marriage. Temporary wives are wanted. We can have up to four wives. The prophet was allowed to have much, much more, but the rules do not apply to him. That's right. But Muta wives do apply to us. In fact, I was applying one last night. That's right. Muta, 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 give me more Muta. This means I can have a temporary marriage so I can have some temporary relationships. If you know what I mean, this is holy and honorable and it feels great. Muhammad was white, so, so white, like mayonnaise. In the middle of the night, he's white, he's white, like my teeth. I praise, I got deep belief. Yes, yes, your Muhammad is peace, a piece of sword and a piece of gun. Standing on a corner, having some fun. What color was Muhammad? White. What color was Muhammad? White. white. Muhammad was a white man with black slaves. That's right. Muhammad was a white man with black slaves. That's right. right. Sahih Bukhari. What color was Muhammad? White. What color was Muhammad? White. What color was Muhammad? White. What, color was Muhammad? White. what color power did he have? White. white. One, my friend, we can do this. Muhammad loved to have sex like a nudist. Always naked, with lots of semen. Muhammad was hot, his blood was steaming. And the one thing you have not learned is how to pee properly. Muhammad himself said that half of the punishment of the grave is because of peeing improperly. That's how right. do you pee? Do you pee while squatting like the prophet or do you stand up like the devil? Okay, the Quran's got God dialogue. It tells me I gotta kill my dog. Why is that? I look at the angel. It's because if there's an angel, they will not enter. The dog's a sinner. The dog's is nasty. Nasty like my dinner. <laughs> Muhammad 
don't lie. He's the truth. Three, four, five. Oh no, this one's a surprise. What's it saying? I'm looking, I'm watching. It says we gotta abolish adoption? You can't have adopted sons? No adoption? Well, that's a surprise. Wonder why? We'll tell you. For the past two weeks, we have been blessed by Allah through the teachings of Muhammad. And today, we've got to give back to our communities and share the knowledge of Islam with others. People do not often have an opportunity and a chance to hear about the benefits of squatting to pee, about the blessing and licking the finger, about dimitude and having the dimmy pay the jizya, or financing your religion through robbing others. They don't hear about the pleasure of muta. They don't hear about burning images and killing dogs so that an angel may enter into the house. They don't know about the necessity of shaving the pews. They do not know about the health benefits of understanding that all water is cure. You must dunk your flies and eat it because one wing has the cure. They don't understand about the beautiful benefits of drinking camel piss. I mean camel urine, camel pee, whatever you want to call it. The blessing is the same. People don't understand how you must eat seven ajwa dates every day so that no magic may be performed against you and no poison may harm you. People do not understand these things. Not even Muslims a lot of times, let alone non-Muslims. But since Allah has blessed us with this knowledge, we're going to share it with others as we do dawah, where we invite others into Islam. It's called dawah. Now, we get to be a blessing to those who are ready to hear and accept it. For those who aren't willing to accept it, well... To see you and she told me I could Something tells me I'm into something good Ummati qad laha fajran Farqub al-Nasran Dawlat al-Islam qamat Bi dima'i al-Sadiqi What's that? It's the Quran calling. Faja time. Yo, guys, help! Guys? Help! Guys! Help! What are you doing sitting on the toilet? You know you're supposed to squat to pee. I'm going number two, but you ain't got no toilet paper in here. There's only a crate of rocks. Where were you when Giovanni and I studied this? Wait right there. Sunan Abu Dawood, number seven. Abdur Rahman bin Yazid reported that someone said to Salmon al Farsi, Has your prophet taught you everything, even how to defecate? He replied, Yes. So Muhammad taught us how to defecate. He prohibited us from facing the Qibla while defecating or urinating and from cleansing ourselves with our right hands and from cleansing ourselves with less than three stones or with dung or bones. Notice the stones part, hence the crate of stones. And Sahih al-Bukhari 161 narrated Abu Huraira, the prophet said, Whoever performs ablution should clean his nose with water by putting the water in it and then blowing it out. And whoever cleans his private parts with stones should do it with an odd number of stones. So you need to wipe yourself with at least three of those rocks and make sure it's an odd number. Three, five, seven, nine, eleven, thirteen, whatever. This is the will of Allah Almighty. Oh, that sounds like it's gonna hurt.
Islam means submission, submission to Allah by following the example of his prophet. It doesn't mean have a comfortable butt all day. All right, all right, I'll try. Good. I can't flush these rocks. What am I supposed to do with these? Throw them outside or something? Are you a moron? You think we're gonna throw out perfectly good rocks? What are we supposed to do? Go out and find brand new rocks every day? Rinse them off and put them back in the crate so we can use them again. Wait, you, did you use these before? I've been sick day after day because we keep getting poisoned by the Jews. I've used those rocks like 80 times. But what the heck is wrong with you? Oh man, ever since my honeymoon with my Muta wife, I've been itching real bad down low. You think I should have used the... Uh... You know, a latex koofy down below? A latex koofy? Yeah. Backpack! Should we use protection when sleeping with our mutta wives? We have here Sahih Muslim. Number 3546. It was narrated that Abu Sa'id al Kudri said, We captured some female prisoners, these are the sex slaves, and we engaged in coitus interruptus. Notice they had the female prisoners and they had sex with them. Coitus interruptus, that's where you have sex without climaxing. It's a form of birth control. Then we asked the Messenger of Allah about that and he said to us, Do you do that? Do you do that? Do you do that? There is no soul that is to exist until the day of resurrection, but it will come into being. Now think about what he is saying here. Every soul that Allah has ordained to be born will be born. When you practice birth control, it's as if you are attempting to decide who will and will not be born. So That's that presuming the power of Allah for yourself. And so Muhammad was against birth control. There is no mix-up. The prophet can't fix up. So, so, so no, no koofies down below. No koofies down below. That would make you think that you are in control over what diseases you get from your mutual wives. Oh, all right. You've got crabs, boy chick. I'll write you a prescription for some crab killing lotion. I'd tell you to shave your pubic region, but I see you're already as smooth as a baby seal down there. Hey guys, we uh, just left the hospital. Um, my spirits are kind of low, but it's okay. I, I just found that I was diagnosed with uh, some sort of a uh, seafood allergy or something. I can't remember what the doctor called it, lobster. but he gave me some yeah, lobster. 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 Uh, he said I have lobsters. Um, I can't remember exactly uh, uh, what kind of lotion he prescribed, but lobster lotion, I think it was called. Yeah. Um, what, what, what do you think, Gio? I mean, how are you, how are you feeling back there? Look, we read the sources. And we saw very clear, very plain, that Allah is in charge of any STDs we should contract. Allah is in charge of whatever diseases we get when we have muta without the kufi on. You know, it, 
And so I, I have faith in that. You know, it is what it is, and I accept it. And um, I'm sorry about your seafood situation there. Thanks, thanks, my brother. The world is a constant battleground of faithfulness. Whom will you listen to, Allah or anyone else? If you listen to anyone else other than Allah, you have made for yourself an idol. So if Allah says that you can sleep with prostitutes, and if Allah has declared that you should not hold sway over what happens as a result of sex, you have no impact on whether a child is born. You ejaculating into a woman has no impact on the will of Allah in predestinating a child being born. Therefore, you also have no say, no say, no input into whether you contract an STD. Yeah. And so, whom should we believe? The doctors or Allah Almighty? And Allah. That's, and that's why I go burkaless. So, I guess we'll just have to leave it there today. And we'll, we'll, we'll talk to you guys tomorrow, okay? Allahu Akbar. Fajr time, praying is better than burning, living is better than dying, so fajing is better than being burnt and stuff by a lot. We've got a little problem here, again. What's the problem? Well, once again, it's you. Every time, it's either you or it's Jamal. You or Jamal. And now, it's you. Are you sure it's not Jamal? No, it's you. What's the problem? A little boy keeps walking around this house like he's your son. When he's not your son, he's adopted. And that is forbidden in Islam. Which part is forbidden in Islam? Adoption. You gotta be wrong. There's no way that God, the creator of the universe, who we are now following, Allah, who is most merciful and compassionate, there's no way he would say something like adoption, which is the most compassionate practice a parent can do, is wrong. Only one way to find out, isn't there? Backpack. What does Allah say about adoption? Well, looky what we have here. It's the Quran, Surah 33, verses 4 to 5 where Allah responds to Muhammad having an adopted son. See, Muhammad had one. Exactly. But not for long. Verse 4. Allah has not made for any man two hearts inside his body. Neither has he made your wives, whom you declare to be like your mother's backs, your real mothers, nor has he made your adopted sons your real sons. That is but your saying with your mouths. But Allah says the truth, and he guides to the right way. Next verse. Call them, your adopted sons, by the names of their fathers, their real fathers, i.e. not you. That is more just with Allah. But if you know not their fathers' names, call them your brothers in faith. Call them your brothers in faith. You can call them your brother in faith if he's your fellow Muslim, but you do not Call him your son because he is not your son. Muhammad had an adopted son named Zayd. Yeah. Allah told him, get rid of that adopted son. Call him by his real dad's name. You're not his real dad. And he had to declare him no longer his son. Boom! So that's what's going on there? Exactly. Are you sure? I'm positive. How do you know? Because that's what the Muslim sources say and that's what Allah says in the Holy Quran. So he just goes from my son to my brother? He's your brother if he is a Muslim. Is he a Muslim? 
I think so. Well, you can find out, but either way, you have to cast him out. He doesn't know his dad. Cast him out. He doesn't know his dad's dad. Cast him out That's of the house. That's why I had to adopt him. Cast him out of the house. So you first had me kill my dog, Mr. Scruffles, and now you want me to get rid of my son, or whatever you want to call him, Marco. It's not me. It's Allah. Cast him out. Cast him out. Cast him out. Cast him out. Who do you love more, Allah or Marco? Cast him out. 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 Marco, you probably think you're about to go on a trip and maybe you're kind of excited because I told you to get all your stuff. And you are going to go on a trip. A very long trip. But it'll be by yourself. Now you've probably wondered why I've called you to gather your stuff together and get Mr. Puffy and Mr. Stuffy. It's because I love Allah. See, Allah has told Muhammad, remember Muhammad I told you about him? The greatest man who ever lived. See, he had a son who he adopted, but that was wrong to do. You know why? Because Muhammad wanted to marry this man's wife. Now let's say you grow up one day and you have a wife and I want to marry her and I can't because you're my son. How do you think that would make me feel? Now listen, I have to listen to Allah. And Surah 33, 4 and 5 tells me that none of these men were supposed to call Muhammad father. And so Muhammad's not the father of any of these men and neither am I. So because of that, I no longer call you son, but I do tell you to get out of my house. I now call you a son of the road. Daddy, can I get my shoes? Oh, there's no one named Daddy here. Sorry. You already know I can't have any more pictures because if I have pictures, an angel will not enter to the house. So, no pictures. So you might be wondering, what's this? Looks like a picture frame. I have this to remind me of what once was. I once had a son I had adopted, but see, Muhammad said that you can't adopt children. And the reason Muhammad said that is because he wanted to marry his adopted son's wife. And when he did it, people started talking bad about him. And so then Aisha noted that a convenient revelation was sent unto Allah that said, none of these men shall call you father, meaning there is no adoption in Islam. So since I can't be looking at a picture because you know all my pictures were burnt, so it's not a picture of my son. It's just simply me looking at the memory of something that once was. But I stay faithful to the cause. I have so much joy for Allah now in my heart. Wake up, do your faja, join me, and you can experience this joy too. Yo, my brothers, it's little Debbie, the major, major Muta. I convert Islam. You want to convert to Islam? You've seen the power of Islam. I see power. You beat Hodila. I only want beating from you. Oh. 
you don't say. It seems that you have seen the power of Al-Islam and that you are ready to recite the glorious Shahada. Repeat after me. La ilaha illallah. Muhammadu Rasulallah. Yo, guys, we got a problem. Now that we've all had a little Debbie snack, we all might be attracted to her. So what do we do? Backpack! What do we do if all three of us are attracted to little Debbie? Well, our magical backpack has blessed us with a variety of excellent resources to understand how we can be around our sister without being sexually attracted to her. Sahih Muslim, number 3600. It was narrated that Aisha said, Sahla bin Suhail came to the Prophet and said, O Messenger of Allah, I see signs of displeasure on the face of Abu Hud Haifa when Salim, who was his ally, comes in. The prophet said, breastfeed him. She said, how can I breastfeed him? He is a grown man. The messenger of Allah smiled and said, I know that he is a grown man. So the prophet's solution to a woman having to be around a man who is not a sexual partner with her was for her to breastfeed him over and over again so that he would feel like her son, and not be sexually attracted to her. Here we see the wisdom of the Prophet. Sahih Muslim, number 3597, it was narrated that Aisha said, among the things that were revealed of the Quran, was that ten definite breastfeedings make a person a mahram, that is a relative with whom you may not have sexual intercourse. Then that was abrogated and replaced with five definite breastfeedings and the Messenger of Allah passed away when this was among the things that were recited of the Quran. So, it was still in the Holy Quran that if a woman has to be around a man and she is not married to him, then she must breastfeed him five times. You may be wondering why these are not in the Quran and this brings us to Sunan Ibn Majah, number 1944. It was narrated that Aisha said, the verse of stoning and of breastfeeding an adult ten times was revealed and the paper was with me under my pillow. When the messenger of Allah died, we were preoccupied with his death and a tame sheep came in and ate it. So we see that these verses are not in the Quran today because they were eaten by Aisha's sheep. And yet, this was the wisdom of Allah, that if we three must be around you, what must we do? We must be breastfed by you, so that we will not be sexually attracted to you and be tempted by you anymore. Do you understand this, my sister? Muta muta. No. A sake sake. Yes.
Fighting for the right of every Palestinian. I am a real Arabian. Fight for my life. Fight for my rights. Well, let me tell you something, brother. There's nothing more beautiful and righteous than Sharia. And yet you got the kufar, the stinking no good kufar. The stinking pig eating kufar. Talking about democracy. Well, let me show you why that's foolish, brother. What better than Sharia to tame the woman, brother? only Sharia, you can beat a rebellious wife. If you go the route of democracy, then the woman has rights over you. Not only that, brother, but in Sharia, you can have up to four wives. And you can divorce them anytime you want by saying talak, 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 three times, brother. In a democratic state, you gotta hire lawyers. You gotta get a judge. And they take you to the cleaners, brother. Not only that. And Sharia societies, I can attack a village and I can take the woman captive, even married ones. Oh, yeah, Sharia and democracy are two things that don't go hand in hand. And what you're going to do, Kufar, when Sharia comes over you and Sharia mania takes over the world for Allah and his messenger. <laughs> That means you dealt it. 
No, let's go. I'll take Stan to Wizard you Quest. Like. journey as we commit to the practices and teachings of Muhammad and his messenger. We are leaving Salat prayer today from the mosque. What do we learn today, fellas? Well, what's, in, what's interesting is like there are like multiple levels of learning in Islam, right? Oh, yeah. you, have, oh, yeah. you have some individual rule, like a rule about farting in a mosque, right? Yeah, we learned that today, didn't we? Yeah, we did. We learned it the hard way too, didn't we, Giovanni? Well, it was that milk is spoiled from that, you know. All right, I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. Let the man speak. Go but ahead. I still don't think you could smell it. But then there's then there's there's a deeper level, right? Where you're just seeing yeah, deeper than farts. Just you're seeing that that Allah has a rule for for everything. I mean, it, it wouldn't occur to most people to think, oh, here's a, here's a rule for for farting inside the mosque, and 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 here's what happens, and and here's the rules that you need. It wouldn't even occur. But Allah has rules for every little detail of life: how to go to the bathroom, uh, regardless of whether it's number one or number two. Farting in the mosque, eating this, eating that, which hand to eat with, how many stones to wipe. Every little detail. Yeah. And every, every other detail. religion makes you wonder. You got to say, is this right? Is this wrong? Yeah, well, you have to think, yeah, man. Exactly. Yeah. If you've ever wondered, hey, when I'm saying my prayers and wind passes from my anus, do I have to start the prayer over? You don't have to wonder anymore. Yeah. We know. We and that's know. just one we more example. Knowledge. We have yeah, the knowledge, we thanks do. to Islam. Well, Allah, it's like Allah. it's almost like this is why we're slaves in Islam, right? Exactly. This we're is why slaves. the Quran calls us slaves. Yeah. This yeah. is what I'm talking about. What we did is actually could be considered the slave trade. We traded non-slavery for slavery. For we were slaves for Allah. Yeah, and that breast milk was curdled. Dude, you've been in there all day. Oh my goodness, dude, I have to pee. Give me my pee bucket. Oh God, dude. Oh, dude, give me my pee bucket. I don't need the toilet, I just need my pee bucket. Oh my goodness. Oh, oh, God. I'm going to the library to pee. Check this out, man. I'm reading this book on the genetic revolution, yeah. and it's crazy the possibilities that evolution presents us. Listen to this. Submicroscopic creatures touring our chromosomes will probably discover that some areas, such as those responsible for directing the formation of vital proteins, are virtually invariant from person to person. It's crazy how chance has so ordered the information inside our bodies, man. It's crazy. Oh, that's deep, bro. Chance, man. Yeah. It's all about chance, man. It's crazy. Hey, 
Hey, God doesn't exist. <laughs> Kufar. Oh, look, man. More members of the missing mustache club. <laughs> Have you seen me? Have you seen me? <laughs> More illegal aliens. They like E.T. and can't find their way home. Yeah, man. I used to be a Muslim too, but you know how I got out of Iraq? How? I ran. <laughs> <sighs> you two are the first atheists I've met since embracing Al-Islam. Backpack. What do I do with unbelievers? Oh no, that Muslim's got a magic backpack. <laughs> Watch out, it's Dora the Exploder. <laughs> Yo, my brother, can I get a Rahman? Rahman! I hope your beloved evolution theory is true, so you can evolve some wings before I throw you out of a freaking window. I'm a Pastafarian. We believe in the flying spaghetti monster. It's just as believable as your god. But really, we're atheists. We don't believe in your god, just like we don't believe in Mother Goose. <laughs> She's an issue. There's one difference between Allah and the flying spaghetti monster. In Surah 9, verse 123 of the Quran, Allah commands us to fight the unbelievers who are near to us. And you? are very near to me. Dear God, please, dear God, help me. Wait, I'm an atheist. Dear God, no, uh, I'm trying to get you out there, help me. I think we should just stick to making fun of Christians from now on. Yeah, man. Hey, everyone. Thanks for continuing to follow us on our journey. I just wanted to praise Allah here for always being the best of schemers. I, just, I mean, to see. I mean, planners. Jamal and I were obviously sick today. So we were hogging up the bathroom. Dennis had to go to the library to pee. There's a good floor to pee on, on that library. But anyway, when he was there, apparently Dennis ran into some Islamophobes. Atheists at that. These guys were total bigots. They started mocking Dennis simply because he's a minority. Thanks to Islam being a race, making Dennis a different race. Anyway, but here's the cool part. Allah used these people's bigotry and racism to get Dennis into a conversation with them. Dennis was able to refute their atheism and teach them some powerful lessons about Islam. They were totally silenced when they heard and saw the true message of Islam. Not like this fake Islam that so many of these fake Muslims practice here in America. I mean, they know how to deal with atheists in like Bangladesh. They get down over there. Dennis is just doing the same thing here. This true Islam totally silenced these atheists. And I bet next time we run into these guys, which they better hope that we don't, they'll either be Muslims by then, or they'll keep their racist, bigoted 
pig-eating mouths shut about our deen, our religion. And if they don't, we might do worse than what Dennis did to them this time. We might call care on them. Feeling sick. This might help. Anyway, Dennis was telling me about some of the stupid things these atheists were saying. And now some of you knew us before we converted into Islam a few weeks ago. And I kind of had a quick question for you guys. If you could maybe leave comments, let us know. You know, if you knew us back then, did we used to say that, that kind of thing? Were we that stupid? Did we say things that were as stupid as these atheists? I hope. I mean, did we sound like total racist morons just a month ago? Tell me you can't see how much smarter we have become after converting. You know, I made this mixture. It's got flies in the urine. Ask the you atheists that think you can laugh at our religion. Who's laughing now, huh? And by the way, if you're, if you're wondering... Um, why I'm wearing this other outfit. It's because my other one has this throw up all over it and stuff. I don't know why I'm sick, but I'm about to drink this uh this mixture here of flies and camel urine. I don't know why I'm sick, but this should probably take care of it. I'm, we're going to get to the bottom of this, you know? But uh stay with us on our journey. This has been great so far. Keep on checking the blog back, but let me know. I mean, did we really sound that dumb? I hope not. I'm a Sharia maniacs, brother. I got something to share with you, brother. And it's about child brides. Oh, yeah, I know that in the West, they say that it's illegal, brother, to marry a six-year-old and to consummate marriage with her when she's nine. But I'm here to tell you, brother, that Allah and his messenger has given us the final command. According to 65 verse 4, brother, a command that existed in eternity. We have the right not only to marry prepubescent girls, but we can divorce them and marry anyone else for that matter. And you know what's beautiful about marrying a prepubescent girl? <laughs> you don't need to take her to the park. Because when you got pythons like these, brother, she can swing on your pythons every night and day with the blessing of Allah and his messenger. What you gonna do, Kufar, when Sharia mania comes for your child bride and your children? So you see the wisdom and the beauty in Allah prescribing Salah. Because according to the hadith of our beloved Nabi Kareem, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says that when Shaytan hears the Adhan, he farts. Yes, my brothers, he farts. And he takes off from the power of the call to prayer. Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar for the Salah. Now you see why salah is important. With that said, I open the floor to the questions to the brothers. Any question? Yes, Akhi. Yes, Shaykh. We've read the Quran and we see some peaceful verses and some violent verses that are for war. Is this a contradiction in the Quran or can this be reconciled? Allahu Akbar for this question, Ya Akhi. In asking the question, you give me the opportunity to highlight the hikmah, the hikmah, the wisdom that Allah bestowed on our Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wasallam. The reason why you find peaceful verses and verses calling to jihad, fi sabir Allah, is not because there's a contradiction. It's stuck for Allah, it's stuck for Allah to even think that the glorious Quran, Al Quran Al Kareem, would have one contradiction. 
What you find is the wisdom of our Nabi Kareem that when he was outnumbered by the Kufar, he preached peaceful tolerance because he knew in that situ situation, the Kufar, they were too numerous. They would squash him like a grape. But Allah, because he is mighty and majestic and because he loves his beloved Nabi Kareem, told him, no, not now, Prophet. Peach, peaceful tolerance. For example, we have in Surah 109, there our Prophet says in the most eloquent words spoken, not just in Arabic, but in English. Yes, even in English, my brothers, listen to the hikmah, listen to the beauty, Allahu Akbar. Say, O oh, disbelievers, I worship not what you worship, nor are you worshippers of what I worship, nor am I a worshipper of what you worship, nor are you worshippers of what I worship. Unto you, your religion, and unto me, my religion. Brothers, these words are so powerful. There is no man or jinn who can say this five times fast without making a mistake. It's too powerful. It's too eloquent. It's too majestic for the human speech. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Now we see the wisdom that when our prophet, he migrate to Medina, he become head of state. Now he has enough mu'minun, believers, to now go on the offensive. So now Allah sees the situation. He says, my prophet, my beloved Habib Allah, now that you have enough weapons, now that you have enough manpower, I now give you orders to strike the kuffar at the neck and subjugate them to the rule of Islam. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Do you see the beauty, the wisdom of our Nabi Kareem? Do you see the power of Al-Quran, Al-Kareem? This is a sign that this book cannot be produced by men or genies. It can only come from Allah Azza wa This is why you find these so-called contradictory verses. It's tough for Allah. No contradiction, but beautiful wisdom, beautiful hikmah, and a sign that Nabi Kareem is the messenger of Allah. Takbir! You might be wondering why I'm wearing this mask, and no, it's not because we keep getting poisoned by the Jews, and it's not because I'm sick right now, but it's because Giovanni, his stomach is still messed up from the other day when he was breastfeeding. It turns out he's lactose intolerant after all. But anyways, what we found is that there's hardly any Muslims in America who are really following the Prophet. I know, because whenever we tell them what the Prophet said about wiping your backside with an odd number of stones, or drinking water with dead animals in it, sucking on other people's fingers, dunking flies in your drink, or robbing people, or muta, they have no idea what we're talking about. And that's what's so crazy to me, is that they think that we're making all this up, even when we show them where Allah and His Messenger commanded these things. This is why these fake Muslims will never understand the true power of jihad. The word jihad means struggle. And I'm here to tell all of you Kufr and all of you fake Muslims that the struggle is real. When you follow Allah the Prophet, Allah prepares you for jihad. You might be asking, how does he prepare you? Was well, through the struggle. I mean, it's a struggle to drink camel pee. It's a struggle squatting the pee without messing up your sandals every single day. It's a struggle waxing your armpits, remember? It's a struggle killing every dog you find. And even muta is a struggle. I mean, do you have any idea how much of a struggle it is getting the money to pay for three or four muta wives a day? And then think about all the doctor visits afterwards because Allah told us not to wear latex kufis. But when you struggle to obey Allah every single day, he uses this to prepare you for total mindless obedience. If you've obeyed Allah and his messenger day after day with how you go to the bathroom, how you eat, how you sleep, how you dress, how you walk, how you talk, you eventually reach a state where you'll do absolutely anything that Allah and his messenger command you to do. You reach a state of total submission. Tomorrow we're going to go find the Jews that's been poisoned us just for being Muslims. And we're going to show them the truth about the prophet that they reject. Wonderful. Dama Sharia maniacs, brother. Let me tell you how amazing the Quran is. And let me tell you how majestic and powerful 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala happens to be, brother. Did you know when you see a shooting star and you want to wish upon it, let me tell you what's taking place, brother. Those shooting stars, like my pythons, are sent as missiles to attack them dirty jinn. Oh, yeah, for you, Kufar, the jinn are the genie, brother. And you could be dreaming of genie all night, all long. But I'm here to tell you, brother, that when it comes to the shooting stars, they're hurled at the genies like these pythons are hurled at the Kufar, brother. I don't care what the Kufar scientists say. They may tell you it's impossible that a star can be hurled at an immaterial being. But I'm telling you with Allah and his messenger, all things are possible. What you're gonna do, Kufar, when a shooting missile like my python comes running for you? <coughs> you <all right? coughs> I'm pretty, feeling pretty sick here. Um, of course you're feeling, feeling sick. You've been poisoned by Jews almost every day for weeks now. Yeah, yeah, you know, they poison the messenger of Allah. They're probably poisoning us, too. We know they're poisoning us. Why do we? Why else would we keep getting uh, sick? We need to take it to them. Yeah. That's what we need to do. We, we should go find some Jews. We need yeah. to take the fight to them. Since I'm sick, I think we need some apple juice. Jews. 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 Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Let's the go get enemies them. of the prophet. Not Yo, Jews. you guys know what? What? I found out where we could find the real Jews. The real Jews where? The realest what? Jews around. Where? I know where they're staying. I know where no. they do their dawah. No. Where? Wait, how'd you find out about the real Jews? Let's go get them. YouTube. YouTube? Oh, oh yeah, I think I know what you're talking about. I watched two YouTube videos, and it told me about who the real Jews are, and it's irrefutable. We could I go refute them. them. We could go refute them. Allah says in the Quran, Surah al maidah verse 82, Strongest among men in enmity to the believers, wilt thou find the Jews and pagans? He says, Surah 98, verse 6, that Jews and Christians are the worst of creatures along with the pagans. And so, as Muslims, we must confront the Jews. And after searching, we have found the true Israelites. They stand on a corner here in Phoenix, from which they control the media and Hollywood. And so we are here to confront them. Here we find the true Jews. We have the true Jews here. We found the true Jews here. And we know that the true Jews have condemned Muhammad and said that white man cannot enter paradise. But we know otherwise. We know that according to our Muslim sources, Muhammad was what? Let us find out. Let us find out. Sahih al-Bukhari, number 63. While we were sitting with the prophet in the mosque, a man came riding on a camel. He made his camel kneel down in the mosque, tied his foreleg, and then said, Who amongst you is Muhammad? At that time, the prophet was sitting amongst his companions, leaning on his arm. We replied, This white man reclining on his arm. What was Muhammad? White! What was Muhammad? White! So Muhammad was white. White! And you should squat when you pee. If Muhammad was white, white, then how can these men say that a white man cannot enter paradise? How is this even possible? We have more sources. Bring them out. Bring it out. 6081. It was narrated that Abu Jafir said, I saw the messenger of Allah with a white complexion and some white hairs. What was his complexion? White! What was the prophet's complexion? White! What's your evidence? White! You are Israel! Are you Israel because your shirt says it? I have a shirt that says Arizona Cardinals. Am I a cardinal? I notice you ignore that friend yet again. 
Make sure you tell these men that in the future you believe he will be a slave. Muhammad was the white prophet with black slaves. That's right. It was narrated from Al Jarari, from Abu Ab the Fali. I said to him, Did you see the messenger of Allah? He said, Yes. He was white with an elegant face. What was he? White. What was the prophet? White. So next time your, your son and your daughter or your cousin oh, with the white. light, you can tell That's them what right. the Bible. Uh, oh, what you got? Right. Right. That's what I want, the light. Well, the homie right. that black is white. That's right. So you, did you hear that out of the Holy Bible, right? Why did you not address this man? Why did you ignore this man? Do you believe this man could go to heaven? Can he go to heaven? Can this man go to heaven? According to the chart you made up in 1969, can this man go to heaven? Can he go to heaven? Tell this man to come beside you. Why do you, in Islam, we would not ignore this man. We would not ignore this man. Is he your people? Is he your people? Is he your people? Is he your people? These men do not know how to pee properly. The prophet himself said that half of the punishment of the grave, half of the punishment of the grave is from urine, from peeing improperly. If these men do not pee while squatting, if they do not pee while squatting, then they do not know the true wisdom of Allah. Muhammad had black sleeves. Say Abu Kari, 7263. Narrated Umar, I went to the house of the Prophet, and behold, Allah's Messenger was staying, and my shruba and a black slave of Allah's Messenger was at the top of its stairs. Wait. What sort of slave did he have? Black. What sort of slave did he have? Black. What was Muhammad? White. What was the Prophet? White. So the white Prophet had black slaves? White. That's right. These men are afraid to answer. They will not answer. Because they do not have the Quran, they do not have the Hadith, they will not answer. These believe Bob Marley will be a slave. How do you pee? Is Bob Marley in the kingdom, yes or no? Yes or no? Answer the question. Is Bob Marley your slave in the future, yes or no? Only cowards do not answer. Ask me a question, I will answer. Bring it up! Sai Al Bukhari, 61, 61. Narrated, Anas bin Malik, Allah's messenger, was on a journey and he had a black slave called Anjasha and he was driving the camels very fast and there were women riding on those camels. Allah's messenger said, Drive slowly the camels with the glass vessels, i.e. the women. What sort of slave was Anjasha? Black. What, what was Muhammad? White. Why do you ignore humanity in front of you? Hey, can this man be saved right here? Notice, do you believe this man can be saved? You don't know the answer, can he be saved? These men teach Bob Marley will be a slave in the kingdom. These men teach Bob Marley is of another nation. Ask them, ask him about Bob Marley. Is Bob Marley an Edomite? Is Bob Marley an Edomite? The garments! Are cargo pants part of the garments? Are cargo pants in the Bible? Is J.C. Penny in the Bible? Are black boots garments in the Bible? Are purple and gold button-up shirts in the Bible? No, they are not! What garments are you talking about? We have given them chance after chance to answer one simple question. Why do they not answer? Because they do not know how to pee properly while squatting. Ask them about Bob Marley. Answer my question, cowards. These men are cowards. They can't answer a simple question. Muhammad was white. These men cannot explain how to pee. But who can? Muhammad. Who can? Muhammad. Tabir. 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 So.
the Jews keep coming after us and coming after us and coming after us and poisoning us and poisoning us again and doing it again. And then we try to face them like men. We find them on their corner. And what do they do? Nothing. They wouldn't even look at us. I mean, I mean, think about the level of cowardice. You're sitting mm. there running the media behind the scenes. You're running Hollywood behind the scenes. Uh. You're controlling the governments behind the scenes. We come up, uh. you'd think that they would at least be able to answer a single nah. question. They couldn't deal with us on the proper way to pee. They couldn't deal with us on Muhammad's skin tone. They couldn't deal with us on the fact that they were saying biblical attire consists of cargo pants and military boots. Nothing. These, they got nothing, man. And this, what this tells me is we need to take it to other people, right? We can't be sitting back waiting for people to attack and poison us. We need to keep going after others. Yeah. And who can stand before us? They couldn't. None. I mean, you know, they think they're Power Rangers, clearly by the way they dress, but we showed them who has the true power. I mean, think about this. They're our most powerful enemies. They're the most powerful enemies of Islam, and they kept their mouths shut when we showed up. Yeah. They, uh... If they if they can't answer us, who can? Wonderful, wonderful. Allah and his messenger, they're wonderful, brother. Let me tell you, the most amazing part of Hajj, brother. Do you know that black stone? Oh yeah, I know it's a stone that can neither harm nor hurt you, nor benefit you, but guess what's so amazing about it? Allah's messenger went up to it, and as he got near the black stone, he started smooching it, kissing it, rubbing it, brother. And because he's an example for all humanity, Sharia maniacs, you too can smooch that black stone. <laughs> Instead of kissing the python, oh yeah, what better than to kiss and smother the very stone that Allah's messenger smothered with his holy saliva. Man, those purple and gold guys yesterday <laughs> called themselves IUIC, Israel United in Christ. More like Israel United in flight. <laughs> yeah, you'd think that, I mean, if these are the Jews who control the financial system yeah. and all the media and all of Hollywood, they would at least be able to answer one single question. Yeah, these dudes are crazy, man. They think that when their Jesus, they call him Yahweh Shai, comes back, they're going to have special powers, shoot laser beams out of their eyes. They think they'll be bulletproof. They think they'll be like X-Men, you know? Those dudes are going to be real shocked when the 12th of Mom shows up, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> man. What the heck did you just say? What? I'm Shia. What? What? what what's wrong? Something, Mom. I patch an all Shia. <laughs> Thank you.
Any last words? She a scum? She a... <laughs> yeah. You're not supposed to treat a fellow Muslim like this. Wrong! Chapter 4, verse 65 of the Holy Quran says that anyone who finds any resistance within himself against any of Muhammad's decisions is not a real Muslim. And Shias have all kinds of resistance against Muhammad's teachings. Innovators. Oh, no. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, those, aren't my, those aren't my real last words. Well, what are your last words then? Uh, um... I was just kidding. I'm not really a Shia. Wait, it was a prank? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best joke ever! Oh my oh. goodness, you had us going there, dude. Oh, oh you totally had us oh. going. Oh man. Let's go, get, let's go get the key. The key is an Islamic doctrine that Allah gave us for our protection. Now, Muhammad ordered his followers to kill apostates and hypocrites, but there's so many rules in Islam and so many contradictory sources that any follower of Muhammad can just accuse just about any other follower of Muhammad of being an apostate or a hypocrite. So Allah, in his infinite wisdom, gave Muslims taqiyah to protect them from other Muslims who want to kill them for being the wrong kind of Muslims. If you ever doubt Islam, just think about the miracle here. Now, Muhammad's teachings were so violent that his community would have really annihilated itself in just a few decades. But Allah gave the miracle of taqiyah so that the community could survive through deception. That's one more reason to believe in Islam. Alhamdulillah, brother. All praise be to Allah. Praise be Allah. I praise Allah for creating the world's biggest arms, brother. But let me let you sure maniacs in on a little secret. Let me tell you how Allah helped me get these pythons to be these huge boulders, brother. Going from 11 inches to 24 inches, brother. Did you know that Allah in his infinite wisdom through his messenger allows us to squeeze the lifeblood to kill every cartoonist who would dare mock and lampoon our beloved messenger by making cartoons mocking the way he looks? Yes, brother. Let me tell you about my career as a Sharia maniac, my career as a jihadi. When I became a follower of Allah and his messenger, I embarked on jihad fees of Allah, and many a cartoonist had their head squeezed like a pimple by these pythons. And the more kufar that I was able to squeeze their heads for lampooning the prophet by mocking him in cartoons, the bigger my pythons got. And so now, brother, when you see Halal Hogan and you see the guns, these guns are ready to rock and roll all over any cartoonist who would dare mock Allah and his messenger. Do you want these guns? Do you want to have pythons so that little girls can swing upon? Then you need to get a cartoonist who would dare mock Allah and his messenger and squeeze and squeeze and squeeze. You guys know what? This is bothering me about this whole cartoon drawing contest, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, look at us. We're sitting here watching this show when we could actually be doing something about it. I just don't really know what to do, but we need to do something about this. Well, we, uh, it is a problem that uh, we're only going to be Muslims for a few more days, right? Yeah. And this is our last chance. This is our last chance to do something big yes. before we fulfill our oaths. Yes. Allahu Akbar. Well, what are we supposed to do? Let's ask the backpack. Backpack, what should we do about Robert Spencer making fun of and mocking our prophet? He 
here we go. Here we have Ibn Ishaq, and we have Muhammad showing us what to do about people who made fun of him. Oh. Here's a guy who had two singing girls, two slave girls, and it says he had two singing girls, Fartana and her friend, who used to sing satirical songs about the apostle, about Muhammad, so he ordered that they should be killed with him. Ooh. So the guy had to die, and the singing girls, because they're singing, making fun of him, they had to die too. And if you look at these passages, these are talking about people who are making fun of him with poems and songs, and he keeps saying that they have to die. They have to be oh, killed. You have to, to hunt him down and kill him. So the modern version of this, the modern version of this would be making cartoons, drawing him, insulting him, mocking him through pictures. What does this tell you? He's finna die. He's got to die. Not only that, Sahih Muslim. Look at this, 5537. It was narrated that Abdullah said, the messenger of Allah said, the people who will be most severely punished on the day of resurrection will be the image makers. It's image not just makers. making fun of Muhammad, but it's painting the pictures. It's doing both, right? Mocking and making fun This images. is doubly bad. Die. God, this is like he's about to die. Clinging to this, the hair on Satan's back. Ooh, he's about to die. Two reasons he should die. Yo, it's our Demi. Hey, Demi, hey, man. Hey, Demi. The heck are you wearing? Oh, well, I was reading that if I become Muslim, I don't have to pay the jizya anymore. You were reading? Oh, yeah. Reading is a dangerous activity for a young man, unless it's how to build an IED bomb instruction manual. Wait, 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 wait. If he wants to be a Muslim, let's explain to him what that means. <laughs> so you want to follow the example of Muhammad, right? Yes, of course. Backpack. What was Muhammad's greatest desire? There is no mix-up. The prophet can't fix up. Ummati <laughs> qad Sahih al-Bukhari, 2797. Muhammad said, by him in whose hands my soul is, I would love to be martyred in Allah's cause and then come back to life and then get martyred and then come back to life again and then get martyred and then come back to life again and then get martyred. So, what was Muhammad's greatest desire? Uh, to be martyred? And you follow Muhammad's example now, right? Sure. So what does that mean? I don't know. It means you're going to kill Robert Spencer. <laughs> Thanks, Rachel. You're the best. No, you are. Everyone I talked to said, if you want help, go to Rachel. No, they did not disappoint. And by the way, I'm going to put out a wonderful Yelp review about how helpful you've been. Yeah, and, and by the way, please don't tell my friend Robert, my old war buddy, that we were asking about him. Yeah, we want this to be a surprise. Okay, yeah, you'll definitely be hearing about it. Guess who just sweet-talked every hotel receptionist in the entire city to find out where our good friend is staying. Wake up, it's Fajr time, very important day. We are sending Jihad Jr. to kill the Copper King. It's going to be a heroic day.
Jihad Jr. to Halal Heroes. Jihad Jr. to Halal Heroes. Come in, Halal Heroes. Copy, Jihad Jr. Are you in position? Roger that, Halal Heroes. I'm in position outside the room of Kafir King. Jihad Jr., proceed with Operation Alibaba. What is Operation Alibaba? The Kafir King will eventually open the door to leave the room. As soon as his neck is in view, strike it with the knife! Chop his body off! Wait, wait, wait. Let me tweet the selfie of myself right before killing Kafir King. Jihad Jr., stop goofing off and kill the Kafir chop King. Chop his body off! Why do you keep saying chop his body off? Well, because if you cut all the way through the neck, then his body falls off. Yeah, so you mean his head comes off? No, no, no. It's all perspective, right? So because the head is the center of consciousness, then it makes more sense if you say to chop his body off. Oh my goodness. We're trying to kill the Kafir King, and you're talking about perspective. I'm <sighs> trying to get this raisin-headed funky to go in there and wage jihad, and you're talking about perspective. Wait, Jihad Jr., did you just hear me call you a raisin head? Affirmative. Well, uh, in his defense, in Sahih Abu Khari, Muhammad did call Ethiopians raisin heads, so it can't be wrong for him to call black people raisin heads. Copy that? Wait, what? Affirmative. Just like a jihadi, bringing a knife to a battle of wits. Jihad Jr., answer! What you mean, battle of wits? Jihad Jr., come in! Oh, man. Jihad Jr., come in. Jihad Jr., what is your position? Jihad Jr. Jihad Jr., report now or else. Jihad Jr. is not here, halal heroes. Let me tell you, Sharia maniacs, how great and majestic Allah is. I already told you about the shooting stars, brother. Even stars know enough to listen to the voice of Allah. Aswajal, brother. But let me tell you something amazing, brother. The Quran says that Allah has the power to annul, to abrogate verses from his eternal, uncreated speech, brother. Now you tell me, brother, who but Allah can erase a part of his eternal speech and still be majestic and glorious in doing it? But let me say this, brother. There was a scroll, a manuscript, that contained verses on suckling a grown man. Oh yeah, brother, you heard me right. Suckling a grown man. <laughs> 
but let me set you straight. Even though at one time Allah permitted it that a woman could suckle a grown man and he could then drink her breast milk even though she wasn't lactating. See, that's another miracle. Who would have thought that a woman who's not lactating can still give breast milk to a grown man, brother? This is the wisdom of Allah and his messenger. But Allah abrogated it. And what did he do with the scroll? What did he do with that manuscript that contained those commands to breastfeed a grown man, even with a nice beard like mine? He ordered a sheep, brother, and the sheep ate the copy with the verses. And those verses are long gone, never to be discovered by any of the kufar. <laughs> what you gonna do, kufar, when Allah decides to abrogate you? We can't just sit around watching Halal Hogan all day when we're missing, we're missing Jihadi Jr. Oh, yeah. He's our second convert. We gotta go get him, man. We can't lose our second convert to Islam. I'll get the caravan started up. Meet you guys out there. We're gonna find Jihadi Jr. get him. Jihad Jr. And why did you fail in your mission to kill no, the Copper King? Failure. Dude, we don't I, like failure. He's got powers, Robert man. Spencer, he's got powers. He's got powers. He's still he alive. got no freaking powers, man. Stop powers? lying. He, he does. Oh, it, this ain't Aladdin. It was Allah's will for you to fail in your attempt to kill the Copper King, just as it is Allah's will for you to try again. You gonna try again? Guys, look, Are you going to try again? I'm not even Muslim anymore. Whoa! Oh, no, he didn't. Tell me I misheard that. Somebody tell me I misheard him. I tell me I misheard him. I don't think I'm Muslim anymore. Islam is for everyone. Oh, we got an apostate and all. I think we need to consult the backpack. Backpack, what do we do with a filthy, disgusting, revolting apostate? Oh, backpack, magic backpack. I'm the nigga that Mac attack backpack. With this sack, reacts, I'm like a man. Sahih al-Bukhari 6922, Muhammad said, if anyone leaves his Islamic religion, kill him. Yeah, you hear that? Watch for the blood spatters. Skip him. I got information about a nine-year-old girl. Nine-year-old girl, go on. She likes to play with dolls and she just had a birthday. We already know about that one, good. I got information about Vocab Malone. The Black Keeper's lights are going to kill him. We're not worried about it. I know where the next cartoon drawing contest is going to be. You have the schedule or something? I do. Where? It's in my car. Let me just let me go get it. You'll be right back? I'll be right back. Okay. Okay. Don't mess this up. Okay. Oh. He doesn't know about the Kia, does he? tricking us and he's not coming back or maybe he got really excited and went to go kill the coffer king by himself right oh now. Oh my goodness, stealing the glory for himself? He's a dead man. Either way, he's a dead man. Shape, we're confused. We had an opportunity to kill Robert Spencer. We sent our best new recruit in 
and it was an utter failure. And so we're wondering, is, is Allah not blessing us? Is he punishing us for disobedience? Or is he testing us and he wants us to try again? You don't just kill him. You terrorize him. And this is how you do it. You tell that kafir pig, you will behead him and make his dog lick the blood. And not only lick the blood, but you will rape his wife, his daughter, and his granddaughter for Allah and his messenger, Allah Akbar. <laughs> Hi everyone, I, I wanted to post this video before the Halal Heroes find out that I got the password to their YouTube channel. Now, I know I shouldn't have converted to Islam, okay? But my faith was weak. I mean, I was going to church and I was collecting money for the poor, but at the first sign of persecution, I fell away. Now, I know I should have known better, okay? My neighbor Giovanni, I saw him go from a loving father of, a, of an adopted child to wanting to rob and kill me without even thinking twice about it. I mean, all because he wanted to be like Muhammad, okay? Giovanni, Dennis, and Jamal, they've been friends for years, okay? But now they're ready to torture and to kill each other all because they feel like Allah wants them to. Now, I know I messed up, okay? But right now, I'm worried about them, okay? There's only a few days left before their 30-day journey into Islam is over, okay? And they want a guaranteed ticket to paradise, and they're ready to die for it, okay? And I've seen the power of Robert Spencer. They're gonna die, okay? So please, join me in praying for them, okay? Lord, I pray for the safety of Giovanni, Dennis, and Jamal, and for those around them. Please show them that Islam is not the truth, and that they don't have to kill others to earn their way into heaven. Please, Lord, let them see the total foolishness of everything they've done over the past few weeks, and send someone into their lives who can guide them to you. Now, I know they've done a lot of bad things, but we all have. Please turn their hearts to you. I pray this in the mighty name of Jesus who died on the cross for sins and rose from the dead. Amen. There are all sorts of things in the Hadith that need to be analyzed in light of the Islamic claim that Muhammad was the best of all creatures, that he's the example, that the analysis of his life that it is actually Allah's intention that his life be lived in such a way as to provide us with the example that, we, that all people are to use in all cultures. There is so much deeply cultural stuff in the Hadith that is, has almost no meaning outside of that culture. It is very backwards, backward looking, very backwards in its orientation. And of course, to Westerners, much of this will strike us as absolutely insane. You know, if a fly lands in your food, you are to submerge it because it has a disease on one wing and the cure for the disease on the other wing. Well, what can we say about something like that? Um, it's, that's obviously untrue. And if a Muslim were to try to defend that and say, well, yeah, here's an example of it. That's why you should submerge the fly in your food. Um, I suppose a, a person that would go that far is then worthy of being mocked if they end up puking their guts out. Jihad Jr. is AWOL. And we've only got a couple of days left to kill Robert Spencer and anyone who happens to be around him at the time. Kill what do Spencer. we do? Maybe we can get our other convert, Little Debbie, to do it. Maybe Little Debbie could kill Robert Spencer. Or we might have to do it ourselves.
guy gotta come out sooner or later. There he is. There's that white devil. Look at that white devil. I see them white oh, devil eyes. There he is. Oh, we got him. Oh, oh we got him now. Yeah. We got him now. Ooh, oh, man. Come. Don't get too don't get too close. Don't get too close. Wait, don't pull out, don't pull out. Okay. Don't pull out. All right, now slow it out. Slow it on out. Not that slow. Come on, don't lose him. Oh, we got that copper. It's time That's exactly what I prayed for in Fox of Bread this morning. Just check the weather report. Guess what it says? What? Perfect day to kill an infidel. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <Ooh. laughs> yeah. Nice. How far are they going? I know how far they're going. Straight to hellfire. <laughs> oh, <my God! laughs> stop right here, stop right here. Little clue. All right. Looks like they're parking fine. Look at that. There he is. Look at that. Devil. Allah has delivered him into our hands. <laughs> oh. Devil. Welcome to your last day on earth, Robert Smith. <laughs> Tortured here and the hereafter. You don't just kill him. You terrorize him. Robert, come out to play. Robert, come out to play. What's the game? Robert Spencer robbed our caravan! Total travesty of justice, man. Tenor man robs another man's caravan. I can't believe Robert Spencer stole our caravan! Robbed our caravan. Freaking upset!
I'm calling Low Jack right now. We had a 2016 Dodge Grand Caravan. Caravan. And Robert Spencer just took it upon himself to rob it. Why? Thinks that'll discourage us. Because he knows we only got a few days left on this path. Kufar King has all kinds of information. And why are his attempts to discourage us not going to be successful? Let me read something here. Read something from our prophet. Low Jack. Sahih al-Bukhari, 2797. Narrated Abu Huraira. Muhammad said, By him in whose hands my soul is, I would love to be martyred in Allah's cause, and then come back to life, and then get martyred, and then come back to life again, and then get martyred, and then come back to life again, and then get martyred. It's a lot of martyrdom. The prophet is the energizer bunny of martyrdom. Oh, 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 oh. Keep getting killed and keep getting killed and keep getting killed. Come back, get killed some more. Come back, get killed some more. Keep killing the infidels. Keep getting killed while killing the infidels. He just keeps going and going and going. So should we give Mah up? Muhammad's spirit animal is a cat. He hates dogs and he has nine lives. If he had a spirit animal, it'd be a cat. That's why cats love him. So, Roberts, Robert Spencer, you think that's the end? <laughs> you have any clue who you're dealing with now? We've been Muslims for 20-some days. You don't know anything about this. <laughs> you don't know anything about what you're dealing with now. See you soon, Robert. <laughs>We're about to die, and I'm having doubts. I can't tell Jamal and Giovanni, but I wonder if other jihadis also have doubts. Good morning, it is Fajr time. We have many things to pray about. We will thank Allah for the beautiful sunshine and little bunnies and things like that. And also, thank you for his deliverance of Robert Spencer's head into a platter. Roger. I've read all of Bakari, I've read all of Muslim, I've read major portions of Jamia Termidi and Sunan Abu Dawood, and I know there's all sorts of stuff that if you just wanted to be really king of mockery, um, there's, you know, I've commented to people, I, I learned more about Muhammad's wives' menstrual cycles reading the Hadith than I ever wanted to know, I can assure you of that. And so if you want to go there, there's plenty of material to go around. Plenty of material. Wonderful. Rasulullah is amazing, brother. He truly is a mercy unto mankind. And let me show you one of the great mercies that he bestowed on his followers, brother. Did you know that Allah and his messenger allows the violation or the breaking, or the annulling of your oaths. <laughs> I can't even focus on Halal Hogan, my favorite show in all history, because Robert Spencer robbed our caravan. He jacked our caravan. What sort of man robs another man's caravan? <sighs> Sucks, man. You know, you know, we need to get our, our minds right, 
We need to be walking on the right path. We, we need, need to be focused. Clear. The only way clear. that can happen is we go to the masjid. We do salat. All of those things bring clarity of vision every single time. And then we'll know what to do. Let's let's uh, go get our bikes. Hey, little buddy. Hey, are you a Muslim? Give me your bike, fool! Thanks, Whip. Get yourself one. This is the beauty of Islam, ya brothers. This shows the mercy of the Prophet of Islam, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That he was even concerned with your nostrils and the cleanliness of your noses. Did you know that the Prophet said that every morning you need to snort water in and outside your nose three times, not twice. Is that a sign of the Trinity? Hmm. But anyway, the reason why you snort water inside and out your nose is because shaitan, shaitan, audhu billah, he stays in the upper part of your nose every night. And because of the love of the Prophet of Islam Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he wanted to make sure you get shaitan out of your nose every morning. Allahu Akbar! Allahu Akbar! Allahu Akbar. Takbir! Allahu Akbar. Takbir! Allahu Akbar. Now with that said, ya brothers, anyone with a question? Uh, yeah, I have a question about robbing caravans. Stuck for Allah, stuck for Allah, stuck for Allah. How many times must you bring up this question about robbing the caravans? If you understand what the Prophet did in the historical context, you will see that the Kufar were begging to be robbed. No, no, no. Robert Spencer robbed our caravan while we were terrorizing him. You did not hear what my response was when I said the context of this. Oh, 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 wait, wait, wait. You said Robert Spencer, that dirty kafir, huh? Well, now that makes things different. That wicked kafir should be shish kebab, and we must make sure that his books do not be sold in the market where there are Muslims. Takbir! Takbir! Yes! Furthermore, additionally, also, too, someone should make a cartoon drawing of Robert Spencer. A cartoon drawing? Why? Because obviously, obviously the worst thing you can do to someone is make a cartoon drawing of that person. Alhamdulillah that even the mercy of Allah extends to the kafirs. Because this man, Robert Spencer, I must admit before Allah and his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he has great, vast knowledge of Islam and jihad. But unfortunately, Unfortunately, he does not use it to bring praise and glory to all of his messenger. Therefore, I challenge this kafir anywhere, even in Kentucky Fried Chicken, to a public debate. Or he just killed him. Did someone say public debate? Public, public debate! debate. <laughs> King himself. Maybe it's a jinn. Ooh, ooh, ooh. For, for, for my first wish, I wish that Robert Spencer would drop dead or that someone would kill him to death. No, it is I, Robert Spencer. And I accept the Sheikh's challenge to a public debate, even in Kentucky Fried Chicken. Although I'd prefer Chick fil A. Did I say public debate? On the authority of the Quran and Sunnah, I abrogate that. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. Yes, you did indeed say public debate. Don't tell me you're going to back out or ignore or reject my challenge like Mubin Sheikh, Asghar Bukhari, Ayman Ismail, Joseph Lombard, Reza Aslan, 
Mehdi Hassan, Akbar Ahmed, Shabir Ali, Ahmed Rehab, Kanerke Dagli, Kasim Rashid, Harris Safar, Syed Sohar Wardi, Jonathan Brown, Ahmed Afzal, Omid Safi, Harun Mogul, Kashif Chowdhury. Aha, ya munafik! I caught you in a lie! You forgot to mention Jabal Barwi, ya kafir! Uh, yeah, okay, uh, look, why don't I just get your number, we can set this up. Say what up? The debate you agreed to. The one I abrogated? <laughs> There's no abrogation in a debate. You challenged me, I accepted. So What's what do you want number? from me? I need your number so I can contact you. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> I need your phone number. What number? You don't know your own phone number? You mean 8675309? You got that from a song. What song? 8675309. Are you sure? You know it's haram to listen to music in Islam, ya kafir? <laughs> uh, how dare you accuse me of doing something haram? This okay. is grounds to reject, to debate a man who's such a liar. How about you give me your email? Info.aol. Yeah, your AOL address would be fine. I just gave it to you. Info.aol. <laughs> Okay, do you have like a Facebook account or something like that? Okay, okay. I accept your challenge. You can contact me on my Facebook. My Facebook? Yes. My Facebook. I think that that sounds like you're combining MySpace and Facebook. I don't think that exists. Really? Uh, yeah. You mean all this time I'm using my Facebook? Then what was I using for all this time? It's not for Allah. But you know what? I will accept your challenge after Ramadan because right now I'm in fasting. You're just making excuses. Yeah, what about after Easter? <laughs> Look, I'll tell you what. If you ever get the courage to debate Robert Spencer, then you'll know where to find me. How will I find an ugly looking kafir like you? All you have to do is say my name and I'll be there. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, A'udhu Billahi Min Shaitan Rajeem, Allahu Akbar. Did you see how that dirty kafir ran from my challenge? Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, victory to Allah and His Messenger. He was afraid, which is why he did not accept my challenge and all of you saw it. Let's give praise to Allah, takbir, takbir. Uh, who, who was afraid? What do you mean who was afraid? You were here for the entire time. You saw. Who are you saying was afraid? Robert Mori. Who? I didn't see Robert Mori. Who was afraid? James Spencer. I didn't see James Spencer. Who was afraid? Whoever he was, he was afraid. And we leave it to Allah and his messenger. Time for Salah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Hayya Salah, Hayya Salah. Sometimes you put confidence in people and then they let you down. We have the most amazing Sheikh in the world teaching us all about Islam. He knows all the information in these books. Every single thing in these books he knows. He probably knows everything in, in every book and so we're trying we're trying to understand why he didn't just destroy Robert Spencer when he when he had the opportunity. He could have humiliated the Kufar right there in the masjid. It was a it was a perfect opportunity. Yeah. I don't know. You know, I think he's just waiting for the right time. Some kind of strategy. Maybe the right time or like like remember when Muhammad was like real peaceful in the beginning? of his, his ministry, because he didn't have that much power yet. And then later on, when the time was right, he came back and, and then he slaughtered everyone when he had a powerful army and then all of a sudden his recitations were not as peaceful. Maybe there's some kind of waiting strategy we just don't understand that Sheikh is doing with Robert Spencer or something like that, maybe. Maybe. But he, he could have debated him. I mean, he could have, if he could have refuted him in debate. Uh. Maybe, Maybe he yeah. wanted a bigger audience. Maybe he's read that book, The War of Art. Maybe there's something he knows we don't know, you know? Maybe Allah is just testing us, letting us know that we... Have to rely on him. We have to rely on him, not on any human being, especially yeah. when 
especially when we're we're almost at the very end of our Islamic journey. The tests are getting harder now. Yeah. We'll see how we do. Yeah. Hey everyone. I have to keep this vlog a secret. So whenever me and Giovanni and Dennis, whenever we're around each other, we somehow keep each other focused on mindlessly serving Allah, not questioning anything that Islam teaches, exactly as Surah 4 verse 65 of the Quran commands. Like we're able to work ourselves up into a frenzy where doing whatever Muhammad said just seems right. Whether it's hiring a prostitute or killing a dog or robbing someone. But ever since yesterday, Whenever I'm in my room all by myself, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I start wondering if all of this, all of this stuff, if it even comes from God. Now, obviously I can't say anything about this when I'm around Giovanni or Dennis because they'll call me an apostate and then they'll try to kill me. But these shows that we've been watching um, with that guy, what's his name? Um, Rich, Rich something? Anyways, that... Oh, Rich White, I think. Okay, well, anyways, that Rich White guy started making fun of Muhammad's commands. The very commands that we've been accepting without question. What if this Rich White guy is right about Muhammad's teachings being false? I mean, what if he's right when he says that Muhammad's claims should be mocked? I mean, it really affected me when he said that. If he's right... Should we be building these suicide vests? I wonder if any other jihadis have these same doubts. Good morning, it is Fajr time. Got a busy, busy day today after prayer. Let me run down the list real quick of our schedule. We need to buy some more prayer beads. Uh, it looks like we need to read Sora 9 again. And we have to kill Robert Spencer. And lastly, we ran out of Islamic toothbrushes. So guys, hurry up prayer. We got a lot to do today. There are some pretty amazing stories of what goes on at Al Azhar in Egypt, uh, in Saudi Arabia, in Pakistan, where you get some really interesting imams that are still in the the seventh century Arabian mindset uh, that will argue that you should. Im immerse the fly and we'll argue that the breastfeeding stuff and and again you know if you you read the hadith you you run into this kind of stuff and it strikes you as very strange and and um you know if any westerner any modern westerner reads the entire section about how you cleanse yourself after you go to the bathroom with an e an odd number of stones not an even, you know, it's the same thing with eating dates. You should only eat an odd number of dates. Well, okay, so Muhammad had some weird ideas. Uh, okay. Guys, this is our last day. Everyone, everyone else has failed us. Everyone except for Allah. Allah yeah. walk more. Everyone's failed us except for Allah and Google. Everyone has failed us except for Allah and Google. There is no choice. We have to do this ourselves. Yeah. This is our last chance to earn our way to Jannah. Yeah. Yes. Gotta get those hoodies. Yeah. yeah. Guys, go finish the vests. Finish the vests. Let's do it. Thanks again, Rachel. You're always the best. Everyone knows it. Everybody's talking about it. They say you need help. Go to Rachel. She's the problem solver. Yeah. Yeah, straight to Yelp again. So that's 8 o'clock for the cartoon contest, right? Yeah, it's so weird that I lost the email with the, with the address. Yeah. Thanks for that. Oh, yeah. 
It'll be a blast. I guess Muhammad was right in Sahih al Bukhari 2658 when he said, Women are morons. Oh man. Man, I think people are gonna remember us, man. On Twitter, they're gonna be talking about us, man. Man, we're gonna blow up, man. I'm, I'm tripping out right now. Look, uh, we, we followed all the instructions on our Google search, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm still just a little bit nervous about connecting these last wires. Yeah, I'm kind of having trouble with this one. I'm, I'm worried about this, this last little detonator. Um, and you know, I hear all the time about our jihadi brothers trying to make their vest, you know? And they blow up in the process. I don't want that have to happen to us. Isn't there... I'm just going to look up and see if there's some sort of hotline for suicide attacks. Okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hotline. Suicide. Oh, look, 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 it's right here. Okay. Suicide right, hotline. All right, call it. Suicide Hotline, this is Chad speaking. How may I assist you? We called because we need help. We're all confused. <coughs> Our wires are all crossed. <coughs> we got a big mess. We just feel like we're about to explode. And how long have you guys felt like this? For the last few hours. I see. So today is different from yesterday. What's changed recently? Well, some guy robbed our caravan. Who does that? He showed up at our mosque. And our shake totally pooped out. And now we have to ride our bikes and a skateboard everywhere. Oh, so there's been a sense of loss. Do you have any family or pets around? Yeah. Well, I had an adopted son. We cast him out. And he had a dog. But we killed it. Mr. Scruffles! Oh, it sounds like you've been going through some changes lately. But as Barney Fife used to say, you've got to nip it in the bud. Nip it? In the bud. Nip it? You've got to nip it in the bud. Come on, you can get through this. Don't you guys have something to look forward to? Yeah! Hoodies! <laughs> I don't know what that is, but if you guys keep moving forward, I say go for those hoodies! This is all about making the right connections. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what you're saying is, we should stop focusing on our fear of failure. We should worry about making the right connections to get our horries. Yes, yes. All right. Here goes. <laughs> yeah, we it did worked. it. <laughs> oh, 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 my God. It worked. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Now we can go kill Robert Spencer. Yeah. Wait, 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 what? Yeah! <laughs> and it's all thanks to you! <laughs> and now we can cut the wire. Cut the wire! <laughs> Hello? Guys? Guys! This is the final vlog of the Halal Heroes. For the past 30 days, Allah has been transforming us from pig-eating kuffar into warriors for Islam. By the time you see this video, we will be in Jannah and the Robert Spencer cartoon clowns will all be dead. The fire of Allah has been... <laughs> I can't read this. Yeah, I can't read yeah. this either. Good Lord. Yeah. The fire of... Oh. Oh. I don't feel good. It's hot.
So, you think we should go kill Robert Spencer without him? No! We started this mission 30 days ago, and we will finish it together. We will not leave Dennis behind. Let's take him to the Jew doctor. In the past four weeks, you've contracted typhoid, syphilis, cholera, crabs, dysentery, herpes, anthrax, salmonella, and tuberculosis. You've repeatedly consumed lethal doses of poison. You have a festering dog bite on your leg. Frankly, I have no clue how you're alive right now. Whatever you've been doing the last month, it's killing you. You're a mashugana. is very backwards, backward looking, very backwards in its orientation. And of course, to Westerners, much of this will strike us as absolutely insane, absolutely insane, absolutely insane. If a Muslim were to try to defend that and say, well, yeah, here's an example of it. That's why you should submerge the fly in your food. Um, I suppose a, a person that would go that far is then worthy of being mocked, worthy of being mocked, worthy of being mocked. Frankly, I have no clue how you're alive right now. What's my name? No clue how you're alive right now. <laughs> it's killing us! Muhammad's teachings are killing us! Allah just tested us, man! He's letting us catch all these diseases of justice. He wants us to become martyrs. You're right. You're right. We, we took an oath to follow his teachings for 30 days. We just need to be faithful. One more day, and we will have kept our oaths. Batpat, give us any teaching from Muhammad. And whatever it is, we're going to follow it. And after we're done with that, we're going to blow ourselves up by slaughtering Robert Spencer. Maslad Amid, one six two forty five. Mawiyah said, I saw the Prophet sucking on the tongue or the lips of Al Hassan, son of Ali. For no tongue or lips that the Prophet sucked on will be tormented by hellfire. Wait, so if we want to follow Muhammad's teachings, we have to suck on each other's tongues? That's what Muhammad did, so I think we have to. Uh... Backpack! Backpack! Is there any way my friends can get out of this? Guys, guys, no, wait, 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 I've got something here. Listen, Sahih al Bukhari, 5518, Muhammad speaking, listen to what he says. If I take an oath and later find something else better than that, then I do what is better and expiate my oath. So this means, according to the prophet himself, if we take an oath, but then find something better to do other than an oath, we don't have to keep the oath. So even though we've made this oath of following the teachings of Muhammad, all we have to do to not keep this crazy oath is find something better other than following the teachings of Muhammad. What's better than following the teachings of Muhammad? Not following the teachings of Muhammad. Oh my goodness, so we took an oath to follow Muhammad's teachings, but Muhammad taught people that they can break their oaths. So by following the teachings of Muhammad, we can break our oath about following the teachings of Muhammad. This means we don't have to blow ourselves up anymore. I don't have to suck on your tongue. We don't have to drink camel pee. Or he flies. We don't have to drink water out of pools with dead animal carcasses in them. Or do the muta muta. We're saved. I don't have to kill dogs. We're saved. We're saved. Sakir.
that we said uh, said that last vlog would be our last. It was the last of the Hello Heroes, but uh, not the Halal Heroes anymore. As for anything we might say right now, sometimes there are no words. Guy who gave us that freaking demonic backpack? Yeah. Mm. Hi guys. How about you? What happened to you guys? Are you okay? Well, where should we begin? How about with the dog bite? Or the multiple criminal violations? Or the multiple communicable and incommunicable <laughs> diseases? Uh, I'm so sorry, guys. I'm so sorry. Wait a minute. We are not finished. Yeah, we forgot to mention how the Mutza wives gave us herpes, hepatitis, laryngitis, meningitis, bronchitis. And then their pimp pimp slap us like only a pimp could. And take a look at my stupid beard. I followed a camel around, man. I stole his pee, man. Yeah, and I drank it. <laughs> my dog died. I mean, we killed him, but my dog died, man. Yeah, his dog died and I lost my van. It sounds like a bad country song. <laughs> oh, you think this is funny, do you? Well, let me tell you something, mister. I contracted an excessive rash due to my excessive grooming. Here, let me show you. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I, I really I shouldn't tell you to follow the teaching of Muhammad. I shouldn't. I was, I was wrong. I challenge you and I ask you to try Islam and... I'm so sorry, please, please, would you forgive me, please, please guys, would you forgive me, please? No! no! We haven't learned anything about forgiveness in the past 30 days. Guys, guys, I, I, Islam was the wrong way. I, I was deceived, I was deceived. Uh, but I found a better way. I, I really would like to tell you about it. Look at you guys. You really look awful. We feel awful. I guess he did a lot of awful things if he followed the teaching of Muhammad. We tried to kill Jihadi Jr., man. We tried to kill Robert Spencer. He had special powers, man. Apparently, we're not very good killers. Well, we did kill the dog. I'm really sorry for what you went through, but you know, at least you know now that Muhammad is a false prophet. Duncan flies in my cereal does sound like a bad idea. Now that I think about it. <coughs> 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 
And we know there's something wrong in the world and there's something wrong in us. And that's why a lot of us listen to people that they claim they know the right way, just like Muhammad, but he is wrong. What do you mean? There is God exists, but Islam is absolutely not the way to God. How so? Islam teaches that we have to do certain things to get to God, but that's impossible. We can never reach God by our good work. We know we all fall short. Yeah, we all share the same prostitute. Well, I slapped her. There is only one true God, and this God is loving, powerful, and merciful. We don't deserve His mercy. He, he doesn't have to show us any mercy, but the Bible teaches us that God show His mercy toward us. How do you do that? Jesus came to this world. He lived a perfect life without any sin and he was killed on the cross for our sins, to take our sins upon his shoulders. Well, if that were true, it would be good, I guess. Yes, it is true, because he did not just die, he rose from the dead, and he's coming back again to take those that following him to be with him forever. This, this is very different from what we've been learning and hearing the past 30 days. Yes, it is very different than the teaching of Islam. Jesus told us to love our enemy and to pray for those who persecute us. Not like Muhammad telling us to kill people. I will give you a new challenge. Accept Jesus as a Lord and Savior and your life will be changed. You know, I'm not really sure about any of this, but after 30 days of being Islamicized, I'm willing to try just about anything. What do you think? Christianize me. What happened? What's going on, man? Stop. No, I know what this is. Our magnetic personalities have magnetized our entire bodies. Here's what we need to do. We need to push off and run in opposite directions as fast as we can. Ready? One, two, three, go!
So for those of you subscribed to David Wood's channel, Act 17 Apologetics, then you already know why yesterday was a special day. Yesterday, Wood released the first of 32 videos for our Islamicize Me project. What's Islamicize Me? So Islamicize Me is a project that is the brainchild of David Wood, and this project has been brewing in his brain for a lot of years now. Now something about this that a lot of people might not know is that we actually constructed this story based off of true events. A few weeks ago, I posted a video of Robert Spencer, and for those that don't know who Robert Spencer is, he's actually one of the world's leading experts on jihad. He's the first person to ever come out with a book given a comprehensive history of jihad from Muhammad all the way to ISIS. A few years ago, after people were murdered for drawing cartoons of Muhammad, Robert Spencer and Pamela Geller said that they were going to send a message. And that message was, we will not be moved by terrorism. The message that jihadists and terrorists send out is that if you make fun of Muhammad, if you draw pictures of Muhammad, if you criticize Islam, then we're going to kill you. But Robert Spencer and Pamela Geller said, we're not going to be silenced by terrorism. So Robert Spencer and Pamela Geller held a cartoon drawing contest of Muhammad. The message was, you're not going to get special privileges. Everybody's religion gets made fun of in America. So you're just going to have to grow up like the rest of us and learn how to take insults without killing people. Is there any remorse whatsoever in the fact that by having this event there simply with the caricatures of the Prophet Muhammad, which we know certainly makes some people very angry, that more people might have been killed, that more innocents might have been killed had these officers not done their job well? You could have had dozens of people dead last night. Ed, your question is predicated on the assumption that I would have been responsible and the other organizers would have been responsible had anybody been killed. You would not when have the been responsible? the reality is, is that the responsibility would have lain with the killers and only with the killers. Robert, what did you hope to gain by offering a $10,000 best cartoon depiction of Mohammed contest? We hoped to gain a general understanding in the West that the freedom of speech was important, was valuable, was worth defending. That the adage, uh, I may not agree with what you say, but I will defend to the death your right to say it, is an important foundation of any free society. And that therefore it is imperative that we stand up against violent intimidation, that we refuse to allow ourselves to be silenced by threats, silenced by murder, that we will not be intimidated into silence, but we will continue to speak because if we allow ourselves to be intimidated into silence, then we are effectively giving the signal that terrorism works. That if you go and murder people, then you can get them to do what you want, get the survivors to do what you want. Let's bring that this up would then. That end up with a rule of murder. One of the reasons why I decided to be part of this project is because I completely agree. What's crazy about this story is that Vocab Malone, the other leading actor along with David Wood and myself, actually knew the terrorists that went to go kill Robert Spencer and Pamela Geller. An evangelical pastor close to Simpson says he was not surprised to hear Simpson's name connected with the Texas terror attack. He ex had expressed to me admiration specifically for Osama bin Laden. He used the word hero. He spent countless hours trying to talk with him about the truth of Jesus and the peace that's to be found in him. But instead, Sharpton became more radicalized because he started hanging out with more and more people who supported Jihad. So we decided to call up Robert Spencer and get him involved in the project and make this story loosely based off of that event. But when I say loosely, I do mean loosely. I personally get a lot of nasty comments and messages from Muslims, including death threats. Everybody knows, or at least they should know, that Islam has a disproportional amount of terrorism compared to every other world religion combined. Since 9-11, there's been over 33,000 deadly terrorist attacks inspired by the teachings of Islam. But if Islam truly is a religion of peace and people like Robert Spencer completely misunderstand the teachings of Islam, then why is it that so many other Muslims who decide to kill in the name of Allah also misunderstand it in the exact same way. Why is it that we don't see nearly a proportional amount of these sort of attacks happening in the name of Jesus? When is the last time that you heard someone say Jesus is Lord before they blew themselves up and killed a whole bunch of innocent women and children? People that don't understand terrorism well says every religion has their extremeness. I mean, look at the KKK. But what people don't realize is that Christianity is based on the person of Jesus Christ, a person who told everybody to love their enemies. And when Peter pulled out a sword in defense of him, Jesus told him to punt his sword away. And this this is the same man who was being tortured by his enemies and he was praying for them as he was dying. If we're not allowed to critique Islam, then we're not going to be able to solve the problem of terrorism. As history has shown us, ignoring the problem will not make it go away. 
Terrorism will not stop if we just conform and accept the Islamic ideology without questioning it. Terrorism will not stop if we refuse to criticize the Islamic ideology that the jihadists and the terrorists believe gives them a theological license to murder all of us. Now what we are not saying is that all Muslims are terrorists. Obviously that's a silly claim. You, me, and probably most of the people that are watching this know somebody that's a Muslim that is against terrorism and is not a violent person. But what we are saying is that the ideology that leads to the terrorism needs to be challenged. And by doing this series, we hope that some people who are thinking about joining ISIS before they get radicalized will see these videos and then they're going to take a deeper look into the teachings that are found in the Quran and the Hadiths. What's Islamicize me? So if you haven't seen the documentary Super Size Me, so what it's about is a guy that tries to show the dangerous effects of eating McDonald's every single day for 30 days, and then he documents his journey. And then at the end of the 30 days, the doctor tells him the effect that eating McDonald's for every day for 30 days had on its body. David Wood had an idea to do the same thing, but instead of eating McDonald's for 30 days, he wanted to see the effects on the body that it would have if you followed the teachings of Islam for 30 days. But we're not just talking about the popular ones here, we're talking about the ones that are less than popular. These teachings were straight pulled from the Islamic sources, from the Quran, Sahih Muslim, Sahih Abu Qari. These teachings range anywhere from drinking camel pee to cure sickness, or to dunking flies in your food, from teachings that permit the beating of your wives, from teachings that allow you to marry prostitutes just for the night, and leading all the way up to jihad. So. A new episode is going to release every single day for the next 30 days on David Wood's channel. I'll go ahead and put a link to that in the description. And as you'd probably assume, things are about to get really interesting. Today is also going to be the first day that I'm going to start doing what I'm going to call my power hour. That is, at the end of every single video, I'm going to spend the first hour responding to every single comment that I can get to within that hour. So make sure you go ahead and leave your comments and your thoughts below if you think that this series is a bad idea or you don't like the series or you love the series or whatever your thoughts are, go ahead and leave that down below. If this is your first time here, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and go ahead and leave a comment down below letting me know you're a new subscriber. And I also want to give a shout out to my super Patreons, Myron Highsmith, Scott Roberts, Alex, Luca, Christina, Matthew, all of you guys, thank you guys so much for helping support this channel. Channel. You guys and the rest of the Patreons that continue to support this project, your support is definitely appreciated. But the next time that someone tells you that they haven't heard about Islamicize Me, what are you going to say? What do you mean?